Coming to you live from some kind of radioactive wasteland. We're like the bitchy and stuff like that. I'm not going to do the whole thing. Fuck you guys. Uh, welcome to Ermagerd Zerker. And there's no number because... <laughs> Fuck it. Uh, Liana K makes gaming better. I am your host, Brian. And I am joined by Bunny Blackwell. And it's just the two of us. Hence the chaos. <laughs> I know <laughs> we're gonna have to carry like Karen and Allison. It's gonna be it's gonna be great though. It's oh, gonna be we're fun. Gonna be fine. It, it only takes I'm the gonna... two of us. I think that um, a bunny has proven herself, and I have leveled oh, up nice. in recent years. So we should be able to get through. That's right, ding. Uh, we should be able yep. to get through this Liana K video, um, and you know, maybe we'll bring some things to light that you guys have not noticed or. Will validate some opinions that you already had. So first, before we do this, why Liana K? Now, okay, I want to explain uh, my reasoning. <laughs> Normally, when we run into these sort of like video critiques or videos that analyze gamer culture and try to find ways to make things better, we are usually looking at videos by people like Anita Sarkeesian and PBS and stuff and the like. I consider these to be a lot of fun, but low-hanging fruit. Le uh, Anita Sarkeesian is extremely easy to refute these days. Nobody that watches us takes her seriously. That doesn't mean that she's not a threat. Um, I, I, I don't even know if threat's the right word, but <laughs> that doesn't mean that she's not somebody that we should continue to debunk, is how I would put it. But rather, sometimes I really want to, like, try to go for what I might consider to be more difficult targets, especially targets that are more popular with people that watch us. Liana Kay, I think, is Do one of those people. <laughs> Do you mean people who aren't really wrong but aren't really right either? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. That's a good way to put it. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that Liana Kay, to be honest, I'm not here to bash her as a person. I'm, I think that she is a well-meaning uh, gamer girl that also has feminist dogma kind of implanted in her. And she's working out these two things that are not necessarily mutually exclusive, but they do come into conflict very often. And she's trying to like um, make these both of these things work without upsetting too many people on either side. She's basically being an aggressive fence sitter. And I'm going to go through her video only to the parts that I think could be refuted or an argument could be made against them. Anything that she says that's pretty much like innocuous or that we can't make an argument against, I'm going to ignore because I already agree with her on it. So you're going to mm -hmm. find that most of the stuff that Liana K says, especially the stuff that's relatively, you know, like how do you argue against that, eh, I don't have a problem with it. I think that, again, she's well-meaning and that she is uh, genuinely trying to uh, stand up for gamers. But at the same time... She's trying to stand up for feminism because she thinks that feminism has been co-opted by this fringe radical uh, element. And if you saw Hannah Wallen's video that she uploaded just last night, you will understand that Liana Kay's view on the fringe element is not accurate because the fringe element is the mainstream element. So, Bunny, do you want to say anything before we... Uh, Oh, Start. absolutely. Yeah, no, I was just letting you finish because you were you were in the stream. You know what I, I mean? Was, I was in the zone. You, yeah. you were in the zone. I don't think that Leanna Kay is a total dipshit. Um, I think that uh, her process at times is decent. Um, my perspective, and I've had many of my fans and subscribers and whatever you call people who email me, um, <laughs> I've had them say, you need to check out Leanna Kay. She's not like the others. And they're correct. She isn't quite like the others. I still find myself finding um, differences in the premise and the assumptions. See, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. It, however good your argumentation is, it all you always have a tell, like in poker, of what your fundamental premise behind it is, and that is where my uh, conflict with Leanna Kay comes in because we are simply working from two very different worldviews. That doesn't mean I think she's dumb. It means I think she's made some fundamental assumptions that, in my opinion, are fallacious. However, that doesn't mean she's, you know, completely 
uh, <laughs> it doesn't mean that we should like make fun of her and make memes of her or anything. So I'm actually really looking forward to this. Yeah. Um, you know, Macintosh, so easy. Sarkeesian, so easy. Leanna Kay, uh, not so easy. Yeah, because it's she she presents very, very well. And she's not wrong. Exactly. So, yeah, I was very happy to be invited to All sit right. in on this video. And I hope the lack of the e and the lack of the Allison won't uh, traumatize people too, no. too much. Because it's it's just Brian and Bunny. Yeah, I think we'll be okay. And Yeah, uh, we'll be fine. Yes, no, we'll be totally fine. So, <laughs> uh, people were asking, why isn't Liana Kay on the street? Well, um, we would love to have had her on. We have tried to invite her many times. However... Um, without drudging up too much drama, ever since the Calgary Expo, uh, Liana Kay made a video about it. She was very uninformed. She made some assumptions. Um, she jumped to some conclusions, although admitting that she didn't actually have all the facts. Karen did not appreciate that, made um, some strong comments in the video. Uh, Liana took them very personally, and she has since said that she would not come on Honey Badger Radio as a guest unless Karen issued a formal apology to her for hurting her feelings. And I'm not saying that to be mean. This is just the this is the fact of what happened. Um, and of course, if you know Karen, she will not apologize for anything unless she is actually wrong about something. So, with that said. We don't have a Liana K. However, um, we are hoping that uh, Liana will be open to coming on sometime because, uh, frankly, I'm always welcoming uh, new faces on the show. So, all right. So, oh, exactly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, I'm going to jump past the beginning, like two minutes and 50 seconds, uh, because Liana K spends that section pretty much just explaining her geek cred and how long she's been a gamer. This is stuff that I can't really refute, so, and I don't really think it, I take, I, I take no issue with it at all. In fact, uh, you know, she brings up a lot of memories that I had. The first video game I ever played that kind of got me into gaming was Pac-Man as well. And, right, uh, when she said the Baka Baka game, I'm like, I'm there with you. I, I understand that. I was there. Yes, yes. Baka Baka, yeah. When I, when I found Pac-Man, that was when I said, what is this? And I've seen, like, Space Invaders and Asteroids before that. And I thought, oh, this is cool. But when I saw Pac-Man and the bright colors, I was like, oh, this is the colors. You know, I lost <laughs> my shit. So I get it, you know. And, and I was there for Resident Evil. I was there for all of that. So I'm not, I'm not going to make any arguments against it because she's not wrong. So, but let's play it from here. Mm -hmm. So when someone talks about gamers automatically being men, I immediately question how much they really know about gamers. But because I am a gamer, I've had hundreds, possibly thousands of conversations with gamers who are male. And the common refrain isn't that they have any problem with women. They have a problem with people who think gamers are the problem. Because women are treated mm -hmm. as outsiders, those critics often take the female form. Okay, so he says, yeah. because gamers are outsiders. <laughs> oh, no, women are outsiders? Um, no, no. Oh, it's, yeah. uh, gamers don't have a problem with women. Gamers have a problem with people who have problems with gamers. And I, and this actually sets the tone. It's stage dressing for the entire video. Because Leanna Kay's, and there's a thread running through this that I'm sure everyone will pick up on, which is gamers are outsiders. Right, mm -hmm. so she is framing it in terms of mainstream society and how they view gamers, and projecting onto gamers that, do you feel isolated? Do you feel alone? Well, let me tell you, I'm here for you, and that is running through the whole thing. I I think this is completely erroneous. Um, I I will say, I don't think gamers spend a lot of time thinking about how non-gamers view them because they're too busy fucking playing games. And uh, and they don't interact with those circles, because yeah. by definition, you are if you are a gamer in the context that Leanna Kay is saying, you are part of the gaming community. You interact with gamers, and never the twain shall meet in some ways. But I I know even at my greatest height of like writing for gaming companies, I never thought about how I was treated by non gamers. I think uh, and and she's she's already begun leading us down the primrose path here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. because she's already begun leading us down the oh no 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 the thing that gamers have a problem with is is how the normies view them 
gamers don't it, it's not that gamers are rebelling against you fucking ruining our games it can't be that no no and this is setting the tone and setting the stage and she's actually really skilled this way i i gotta give her a slow clap for this because having i've watched this video three times now and she is so good at laying down the foundation setting up the dominoes and then knocking them over she's brilliant mm -hmm. unless you are going into it with a critical mind going no this is wrong no this is wrong no this is a premise you're going on which is again why i'm glad we're doing this um she is very good at what she does absolutely and mm -hmm. i would i would say that yeah what, what you were saying about like creating this this image uh painting this picture of what gaming culture looks like while at the same time she later contradicts it a lot by you mm -hmm. know saying things that oh yeah they're all different kinds of people so i mean like i'm of the belief that gaming is so it, it, if gaming was something that the normies did not participate in, it would not be the largest, most profitable entertainment industry that has ever existed. Thank you. In all time. We are, okay. I mean, this isn't when you're fucking worried about the grooves in your text base, you know, zork, right? Right. Gaming is now mainstream. Come on. We're not Absolutely. losers anymore. All right, really? let's continue. Yeah, so the, there is a premise that she sort of sets here. No one can expect gamers to get on board with even small amounts of change if they feel demonized or remarginalized. The association between the gamer identity and privilege is a self-defeating tactic. Keep in mind that punching up is still punching, and whenever you punch, it hurts. Hurt people don't tend to be open to compromise and change. It's very hard to convince someone to treat others like human beings when they themselves don't feel like they're being treated like a human being. Holy shit. Holy shit. All right. She actually just said that gamers need to be encouraged to treat other people like human beings. And this is how you get gamers to treat other people like human beings, as though we don't do it already. Right. She also <laughs> partly validates the concept of punching up by saying punching up is still punching. Um, mm -hmm. Essentially saying it's, it's, I understand what you're doing, feminists, when you say we're just punching up. Mm -hmm. And that um, she's saying that even if you think that you're punching up and that's a good thing by default, you're still punching. But the thing is, though, Liana, is that maybe the whole concept of punching up or down is wrong first off which is something that you confess to but maybe the idea that feminists are in your mind punching up at all in any context anywhere is also wrong thank you because whenever you say punch up or punch down you are assuming levels of privilege which is karaoke and you have bought the bullshit really yes. wow so that that's just it i mean you're you're still assuming that there is a place for punching up by oh, yeah. saying there's, there's that, still a hierarchy, right? Yeah, there's still a hierarchy. It just might not be in gaming. And mm. and that's that's wrong, basically. I mean, feminism is the establishment. If if you don't know that, then you haven't looked closely enough. And again, I would I would say you want to look at Hannah Wallen's video where she pretty much dismantles she's gonna do multi part series because um Liana Kay's anti-feminist rant video is a bit long and needs a lot of responses. And mm -hmm. Hannah Wallen's video response is awesome. I asked her if I could mirror it on Honey Badger Radio. I haven't heard back from her yet, but maybe I will. I don't know. Right. And Hannah is incredibly thorough. Like, she is like no stone left unturned when she mm -hmm. decides to friggin' fisk someone. So That's right. Mm -hmm. But, right. but no, you're exactly right, Liana Kay. Uh, the second you mention punching up or punching down, it, number one, it, it shows the audience that you're speaking to. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, she's trying to speak. She is speaking to a certain demographic and isn't your average gamer. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. Um, the, the second thing is, by saying punching up and punching down and giving that idea legitimacy, she is, she's again, she's tipping her hand that that she still is buying into the idea of privilege and rank and some people are better than others and i'm like no 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 <laughs> mm -hmm. you are she tips her hand like i i would play poker against her and i would clean her out because she she constantly tells constantly yep so yeah but we can go on all right let's do this 
Now, ease up, activist types. I'm not trying to take away your right to protest. It's just that there's a time to protest and a time to have conversations, and you can't do those things at the same time. All right, so just to throw it in there, all right, so Liana K wants to make sure that she continues to get to hold the attention of what she calls activist types, which are probably just, you know, uh, social justice warriors and feminists that are a bit more moderate and would watch her videos while still believing their beliefs and their ideology and they want it to uh, affect the gaming culture, you know, games, media, whatever. Um, the, the, the problem with this is uh, that she doesn't really tell them, what she says is, there's time for protest and there's time for a conversation. And I'm not going to tell, tell people what they can and cannot say. I'm, I'm a massive proponent of spe free speech and all that. However, um, if your side of the discussion has been shown that it's, that, you know, it's been debunked and your facts are no good and you can't actually make good arguments, then maybe that should be the reason why people would consider whether or not they should continue to make arguments instead of simply because it's not nice or because it's not the right time. Like there are some oh, people who yeah. can, you know, a flat earther could continue to make arguments for why the earth is flat. And I won't say that they can't do that. However, um, that doesn't mean that they're right just because I say they can keep talking about it. And we can't acknowledge that they are just wrong and nuts. <laughs> so unless, oh, yeah. of course, they can provide evidence to the contrary. And again, she's she's betraying her internal narrative here by saying there is anything about gaming that is worthy of protest. Really? Mm -hmm. Really? This is her perspective, um, that there is something wrong with gaming. And no matter how she tries to spin it, no matter how many apologies she makes for it, and no matter how many times she tries to say, guys, you got to work with the gamers. I'm a gamer. Come on. Yeah, yeah. The implication is still, no, gaming needs to change. Well, fuck you, really? No, gaming does not need to change. Exactly. So, And that is where I come from. So my perspective, and within the first three minutes of her video, she displayed that uh, underlying premise of, I accept that gaming needs to change for the betterment of society, in which case I know which side I'm on and I know where the punctuation mark is. It doesn't mean I'm not going to listen to her, right. but it means no matter how pretty her words are, I know what is behind it. Exactly. I mean, when I saw, the reason why I chose this video is because I saw the title, 10 Ways to Make Gaming Culture Better for Women. And I was like, yep. wait, what? How? Why? Why? The fuck, why the fuck would I do that? Yes. I mean, we already <laughs> have women that are playing games in the gaming culture. Why don't we ask what, them why yeah, they're what here is, what if is, it's not good What does better them? for women mean? What does yeah. better for women mean? <laughs> Are, are we going to turn, you know, Call of Duty into Candy Crush now? Because going by the demographics, that would be the way we'd go. Exactly. Oh, fuck off. No. Okay. Okay, yeah, move on. Let's go on. <laughs> Gamers are sponges for information, but because choice is an inherent part of gaming, we rebel when we feel like we're being told what to think. And this tired old line that it's okay to like things that have problematic elements. What? That's like saying it's okay to be an asshole as long as you know you're being an asshole. No, it's mm. not. People don't want to like things that are being called racist, sexist, homophobic, or transphobic when we're pretending to be heroes. Okay, she goes way off-road here as far as I'm concerned. In real life, I would be holding my forehead like Jackie Chan going, Whoa, <laughs> really? You need to fake a seizure right now or you, <laughs> or you have some splaining to do, Lucy. No, it is totally okay to like problematic things. It is totally okay to like things that other people think are homophobic, racist, or asshole. As long as you are able to deal with it and you know why you like it. Wow, there's some serious moral policing going on here. Not on board. No. Plus, there are plenty of people who are okay with being assholes because they acknowledge that they're assholes. Mm -hmm. I think they should totally be allowed. I'm not gonna. Hello. I'm not gonna make <laughs> being an asshole illegal. I don't think that that needs to happen. Um, so yeah, I don't have a problem well, with that. Well, define asshole. Yeah, is an asshole someone who kills puppies, or is an asshole somebody who disagrees with you on the interwebs? Really? And <laughs> and the definition has gotten so subjective and diluted, it means nothing anymore. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Moving on. 
Mm -hmm. This statement, which was probably intended to give gamers a pass on continuing to enjoy games, mm -hmm. just ended up offending everybody. Gamers really aren't some different species. We're people who just don't tend to fit in other places. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. So <laughs> oh gamers are people who don't tend to fit in other places. All right. Wow. So are there some gamers that fit that description? Sure. Uh, why plenty doesn't, of why them. doesn't she? Why doesn't she just fucking come out and say we're all autists, right? Let's just go yeah. that way, shall we? Really? Yeah. Wow. I, I think that there's an appeal being made here towards those people who do feel like outsiders so that they can say, Liana K gets me, I like her, let me sub and go to her Patreon. No, wait. Um, I'm not trying to make any bad faith assumptions about Liana K's intentions. Please understand that. But it does... Uh, rub me the wrong way when you at mm -hmm. once understand how massive and mainstream gaming is and then within that gigantic sphere of people who play games many of which are probably not necessarily game enthusiasts probably the majority even even men who might be really into call of duty or into like the nba uh you know basketball games or whatever they may not be enthusiasts in the in the sense that they're not necessarily tracking to find out what new consoles are coming out or what new games are going to be on mm -hmm. what consoles or you know whether or not there's going to be a special edition when the the game shows are going to be who direct you know like which sort of uh creative directors and and um, development teams are the best, they may not know those things, but they still make up a large percentage of the, uh, of the consumer base. When you actually want to look at the true enthusiasts, they'll be like a smaller percentage within that larger percentage. But even then, those people are also, most of them, normal people who have jobs and they have families and they go to school and they get along just fine in social situations. So, within, exactly. Yeah, I mean, the actual crowd that Liana K is trying to reference to that are supposedly these outsiders and uh, uh, rejects or whatever, these black sheep of, of civilization, they, they do tend to gravitate towards gaming as well, but they don't even represent all the enthusiasts. So, what is she actually saying? Is she basically working in her own assumptions about gaming culture? Or is she trying to make an appeal to the people who are probably what she perceives to be the majority of people in Gamergate, maybe? I'm not really sure. Um, and this is what I well, this is this is what I'm getting at. It she is she is going right up to the line of essentially saying that gamers are mentally ill or misanthropic, or they have a personality disorder, and that's why we need to talk to gamers slowly and with caring, because they are delicate. And, mm -hmm. it, it, you know, it, you may think I'm, I'm using hyperbole, chat, but later on in the video, she actually says, you need to show more caring to gamers. So, yeah. bear with me here, I'm not just pulling this out of my butt. And when you pathologize a group like that, it never ends well because it both takes away from the realities it's like when people use autist and they use it in a snarky funny way which i get 4chan and i get that bullshit i will never do it myself mm -hmm. um because that's it that's a line for me and uh it's the same way i think i used cuck for like literally the first time in my entire life the other day and it was with respect to canada and trudeau so i think it was warranted Absolutely. but uh, i'm very i'm very careful with the words that i use but she's essentially painting gamers as uh well, you know, you need you need to, to approach them, especially feminists, because you know they've been hurt in their lives and they're fragile. Mm -hmm. And this is, but but ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh, but let's go one step further, yeah. This is Leanna K is such a chick, right? And I, you know what I mean, because she's saying the things that have that women, especially women in the feminist sphere, want said to them. Yeah. Treat me differently because I'm fragile. And that, again, she's telling her cards. She's just all over the place. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You, she's she, using the, she has she's no using, cards uh, on her chest. She's using a kind of appeal to victimhood that usually works on yes. women. And she's trying to apply yes. it to gamers. But the thing is, gamers don't want to be seen that way. They don't want Thank to be you. seen as the, they don't want to be seen as the oppressors and the rapists and the, and the, the sexists and the misogynists and all that shit. But they also don't want to be seen as weaklings that don't have, you know, that need to, like special care and attention. They, right. they, they just want to be left alone for the most part. 
you know and, and like, she starts she starts out the equation just fine because earlier on in the video she starts off the equation going gamers don't want to be told what to do but she doesn't balance the equation by saying they also don't want to be told what they are mm -hmm. so it oh yeah, yeah yeah all right let's keep going yeah 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 Instead of focusing on differences, appeal to gamers based on common experiences. We all want the same thing from gaming, a place where the suck of the rest of the world takes a damn break. When you start talking to gamers about privilege, we feel like we're being told life's been handed to us on a silver platter. And that doesn't match our experiences of being bullied, ostracized, and in some cases, marginalized because of physical or mental health conditions, neuroatypicality, or profound introversion. See? She yep. just, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. You can't just be someone who likes games, right? You have to be pathologized as there's something wrong with you and you've been bullied. You know, number one, fucking everyone has been bullied at some point in their lives. Number two, it likely had nothing to do with gaming. Number three, gaming does not inherently denote or connote uh, loser tendencies. It simply means you have a certain hobby. And trying to, I find it, incredibly condescending and insulting to paint me in this category and all my friends that I know are in this category because A, it's inaccurate and B, isn't this exactly the kind of stereotyping that her side, and I, I mean her side in the general sense of obviously the premise that she has put forward as her perspective, isn't, isn't that bad? Mm -hmm. Isn't it bad to be assuming weaknesses? On the parts of other people, shouldn't we be shouldn't we be giving them the charitable benefit of the doubt? Yeah, yeah. And also, um, not everyone plays video games to escape the real world of suck. And the concept of privilege does not actually reflect this real world of suck. So when people r rail against privilege, they're railing against it because it's bullshit, not because it doesn't match their personal experiences. Because these are gamers who are atypical according to what you're saying. So you're trying to work out this idea that, it's like Leona K, this is what I, it seems like. Privilege is real, I have to, I know it is, and I have to fit this in. Gamers, their personal experiences don't match this concept of privilege, which I know exists. So what I have to do is, I have to figure out how both of these things can coexist and be real at the same time. Oh, I know, gamers, have a typical many of them have been bullied and mm -hmm. they also have a typical neuro issues and physical issues meanwhile just, yeah. anybody who doesn't match those things who've never been bullied and don't have those issues in that world which is some other world that exists outside of it privilege exists well the thing is privilege doesn't exist in the feminist sense if there are privileges they 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 vary from individual to individual basically and even then in certain contexts i think those things are different for example somebody might say that a rich person has privilege because they're rich however that rich person could have other problems such as they could have disabilities they could have relational issues they could have mental issues they could be they could suffer from chronic depression they could be um workaholics that can't stop because they have to maintain all of the things that their riches have provided them so that doesn't mean that they are privileged in every aspect. Unfortunately, feminism's definition of privilege is so oversimplified and it only goes one way, towards men, towards whites, towards straight people, and so on. So that definition of privilege cannot fit into the narrative of gamers' experiences that you have actually you know, spoken to, about, to gamers about which is talking about the, the bullying that they may have dealt with, their own uh, neuro -atyp -tip, you know, typical behavior, and so on. So you sort of try to make peace with those things by saying, oh yeah, privilege is totes real, guys, but just not over here. Right? I'm just looking at her slotting gamers into the same formula as has been used by any other what we would what some would typically call the regressive formula of disenfranchised plus privilege talk plus chiriarchy plus extra empathy plus extra caring equals they will do the right thing and be on the right side of history. It, it's like she's got the, the feminist SJW formula going around in her head and this time she's just slotting gamers 
in the well gamers have been disenfranchised in these ways so so you need to speak to their disenfranchisement in order to get them on your side and it 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 that is the formula that she is working from mm -hmm. and this is i this is very common here in canada you know that this is especially common in academia this is the literal formula like this is the logical syllogism that happens here which is disenfranchisement privilege acknowledgement blah 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 reparations mm -hmm. blah 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 come together and she's just it's like she swallowed the entire book and it's stuck in her throat mm -hmm. And that is one of the that is one of the reasons why I can't get on board with what she's saying, because again, the fundamental premise is is so formulaic with everything that is wrong right now in critical thinking and social uh, um, uh, interactions. Yeah, you don't need to focus on disenfranchisement to come to common ground with people. That is a mistake. Mm hmm. All right. Anyway, <laughs> let's move on. Yeah, yeah. What's been lost in these punching up tactics is that you can't know a stranger's suffering. Gamers haven't been shown very many examples of kindness or the benefit of the doubt. So when you start adding more to our plates that sounds like more rejection, you're going to get blowback because of the simple fact that a lot of gamers are flat out tired of being picked on. And All right. Wow, there's well so much wrong here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the first thing that comes to mind uh, is, um, does she realize that she's, I mean, earlier she said that gamers aren't always white men, but does she realize when she talks about people who have suffered blowback for their gaming that it's men? Really? Yes, she does. I mean, she does kind of like, she does kind of I'm like, which, yeah, kind like, of which like way are you going here? Around that whole most of the people who are getting this are men which is actually really funny because later she talks about how much more harassment women get I where, know. <laughs> where she, it's kind of like interesting because you know you just literally ignored that when people think of a situation in which someone is being bullied it is almost always in every circumstance men that doesn't mean women don't get bullied it does happen but when you think about it like when people imagine when bullying moves on to violence um, or even if it's just someone who is long suffering, it is usually a man. Even in her cartoon example, she shows a boy yeah. pointing at another boy. Exactly. How many women have been accused of being basement dwelling leg beards who do nothing but play video games, right? Yeah, it doesn't really come up. You She's, can't even get laid and you don't shave and you smell bad and all you do is game. Yeah. And, I bid, yeah. No, and that, some of the does, biggest bullies. Does not happen. Does not happen. Yes. And some of the biggest bullies these days of those groups of people who are mostly men and, and, and usually framed in the context of, um, of men comes from feminists and the gaming press in, in most of those cases. Which, of course... She doesn't want to acknowledge because any feminist that's act acting in a mean way that's coming from the dwarf side, that's not actual feminists because she's doing right. it right. So, all right, let's continue. Mm -hmm. Empathy is best applied when you lead by example. So that's why I decided to just present the facts and provide a guide as opposed to starting by focusing on specific games using terms and theories that people may not really understand. I believe that the fun... Ooh. I know. I okay. took a deep breath there. Wow, condescending much? Really? <sighs> Terms that people might not understand? Really? You haven't used a word of more than three syllables in this entire fucking thing, Leanna? You really think we don't understand you? Yeah. Wow. Um, so, the assumptions, the, the message seems to be here, and I'll, I'll, let her, I'll let it play out so you guys can see the whole context in case I'm not getting it, is that feminist theory is difficult to understand um, and therefore easy to misinterpret. Probably she would even argue that it's easy to misinterpret um, by feminists themselves who are making content that have maybe worked from the wrong definition. Essentially they're doing feminism wrong because they're not doing mm. the right kinds which should be happy, happy shiny people holding hands version of feminism. Right. Just equality y'all. That's so. what I keep being told. Yes, that's what, that's my, what I keep hearing. My my dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> the fundamental question that feminists need to answer for gamers is, why should we care about you when no one cares about us? My head exploded here. <laughs> so much emphasis on the carings and the feels. You are such a girl. <laughs> yeah. Wow. 
No, not everybody cares about fucking caring and feelings. Really? That is your focus? Yeah. Why should I care about you if you don't care about me? What a narcissistic, shallow, bullshit way of living your life. Really? Wow. I could not believe this when I, when I watched it the first time. I'm like, did you actually just say that? Why should I care about you if you don't care about me? Well, number one, caring is uh, kind of a fallacious word. What do you mean by caring? Do you mean doing something about? Do you mean giving a damn about? Number two, I have a strict, for me personally anyway, and I can only speak for myself, I have my ethical sort of canon of things that are okay and things that aren't. And they have n very little to do with how other people treat me. Yep. Um, it's There are things that are basic even if you're a shithead i'm still gonna do right by you especially with you know especially in medicine yeah if you can have someone who absolutely hates you is spitting on you is fighting you and yet unless they say don't treat me you treat them because that is the oath you have taken and that is your ethical drive that is what you do i if i based my life off of my level of being a decent fucking human being is, is uh, relative to how decent other human beings are to me, I would be in prison. Mm -hmm. Not to put too fine a point on it. You can't, you cannot think that way. You have to put your own boundaries, you have to make your own decisions, and I, this is, this is just such a facile way of viewing the world. Yeah. People should be nice to I mean, each other. and, and yeah. yeah, and the uh, flip side of that, that. and the flip and the fl <laughs> yeah, the flip side of that coin is what she's saying is well, if you're nice to me, I'll be nice to you. The flip side of that coin is if you're nasty to me, then I can be nasty to you. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is not no, 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 no. <laughs> that is that down that rabbit hole lies madness. So that's right. Yeah, I. It was, and and she's been relatively smart in everything she said, and this was just so two dimensional. I was scratching my head. I'm going, did somebody else sub for the writing for this part? Like, because it, it almost doesn't sound like her. It could be an appeal anyway. <laughs> to, uh, my, for my thought was maybe the audience, um, well, she either, oh God, I, I don't want to infer what her intentions, I don't know what her heart, what's in no. her heart. Okay. I don't know what she's thinking. No, of course but not. But something like this, uh, I'm sort of like wondering whether or not she is appealing to a younger audience or she genuinely thinks that the way that feminism has been presented that people are responding to was done wrong and she knows how to do it right. And that is from a place of caring and empathy and all of that. Um, which is possible <laughs> that she would think you that. You are very charitable. You are so charitable, Brian. <laughs> I see it the complete opposite, and I see it as totally manipulative and and uh, appealing to the contingent of the population who do feel wronged mm -hmm. and uh, wanting them to go, she gets me because she cares about my pain. And uh, no, 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 no. I don't think she does, actually. Uh I think she's just going, yeah, you know, you, you gamers, you've been really mistreated. So you need to get on board with those of us who understand your pain. No, because I, we'll I, help I, you what I really, better people. What I really think that <sighs> she's doing is I think her ultimate goal in this is to protect feminism. She oh, wants, to, she uh, wants no. to protect the label and she wants to essentially be the, um, well, she wants to be the one good feminist. She wants to be Bingo. like a better. It's essentially like, um, uh, you know, Anita was doing it wrong because she went to school and took gender studies courses, right, mm -hmm. and became a journalist. So she has her flavor of feminism. She's carried it with her. She's she believes very strongly in it. Anita Sarkeesian comes along, uses her flavor of feminism to make hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of dollars. Okay, this of course upsets everyone in the gaming community. And then when you have the Zoe Quinn thing and then Gamergate happens and then you have the gaming press who also have a lot of feminists and a lot of angry ones and they're going after the gamers as well. And they're all using the same buzzwords and the same talking points to bash mm -hmm. men, white people, gamers, and so on. Liana Kay sees all this happening and likely thinks to herself, this is not the feminism that I signed up for. I don't like all this fighting. Why don't these people stop fighting? I know. I'll make a series of videos that basically says, look, I'm a feminist, but I'm one of the good ones, like Christina Hoff Summers. I'm on your side. 
and I'm yeah. here to help you. But ultimately, the reason why I'm doing this is because I don't like the way that feminism is being portrayed. I don't like the way it is, and so I'm going to try to fight to essentially protect the label of feminism because I don't want to let it go. It defines who I am. It's a part of what I am. I need this label. Mm -hmm. This is something that I see over and over and over with people who end up arguing against what they consider the fringe radical feminists while trying to protect what they have and calling it feminism. But ultimately what they're doing is they're not doing it because they really care about uh, the issues. They actually, the issues are secondary. What's most important is that whatever it is we do while we're fighting for women's issues, I want the good part of that that everyone can get on board with to be called feminism because that's Bingo. what I've chosen. Yep. So. It, you're exactly right. I was just going to, I was going to concatenate it a bit and less eloquently than you have said, Brian, oh, oh. but I was going to say, it's like, she's saying, Hey, Hey gamer guys, I'm not like those other feminists. I understand you've been hurt. I understand that life's been unfair to you, but you know, we cool, right? So mm -hmm. maybe, maybe my perspective isn't so bad and you could consider, you know, changing your gaming a little yeah. bit. And that is totally what I get from this. There is nothing about what men fucking want from games. No. Oh, and that's, and that's the bottom a good line point. for me. Well, I mean, let's continue. Let's find out. Does Leon Kay care about what men think in gaming? Totally fair question. At least in my case. I do care about gamers because I am one. And that's what I found gamers want as a starting point. Because of the historical origins of feminism, because of the way we've had to defy gender to promote dignity for our gender. What? Yep. Let's go back a little bit. Oh, I know. <laughs> it's downhill from feminism here. Because All right, I'm going to go back a little bit because now she's talking about feminism more. Mm -hmm. That's what I found gamers want as a starting point. Because of the historical origins of feminism, because of the way we've had to defy gender to promote dignity for our gender, caring often hasn't been a big part of the equation. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to the dork side. That's why it was important for gamers to understand that the dork side is a part of feminism, but it isn't all of feminism. Um, she's wrong about that. Just period. Wrong. Yes. Andrea Dworkin's work is not on the fringes again it's go to hannah wallen's fucking, yeah it's a centerpiece go to hannah wallen's uh video it's on her youtube channel um i can leave you guys a link i'm i'm thinking i'm gonna mirror it on the honey badger radio if Al, if hannah lets me and for her to say no 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 that's not the real feminisms um that's just that's just factually incorrect i'm sorry that's that's all there is to it and this whole thing about women having to uh, what did she say? Go back a little bit again. I want to hear this um, before I jump ahead. Not us. Okay. Totally fair question. At least in my case, I do care about gamers because I am one. And that's what I found gamers want as a starting point. Because of the historical origins of feminism, because of the way we've had to defy gender to promote dignity for our gender. All right. So she says mm -hmm. that women uh, feminists had to defy gender in order to promote dignity for their gender. Or they completely use their gender to play on men's desire to protect women in order to leverage them to give them the vote. I mean, you could go either way. Well, really. <laughs> in fact, in almost every case of feminism, all the waves, feminists were using f feminist women were using men to step in and guard them and institute policy for them and change laws and write things in and so on. So all feminism did was they used their own patriarchy to create the, the freedoms and laws and policies that exist to this day, many of which were very anti-male. So did, uh, women didn't do that much defying, uh, <laughs> really. Um, exactly. Unless you consider just sort of like, you know, doing hippie shit and protesting uh, to be that, which... Oh, defying their gender would have been putting a, a pair of fucking britches on and going out in the fields or going down in the mine and working for 18 hours a day and dying at 30 years old. That would have been defying your fucking gender. Yeah. But or, that's not what happened, is it? Or going out to the trenches or, yeah. you know... Taking in some mustard gas, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that see that that kind of defying your gender, I can get behind. Yeah, 
But I mean, that's that's dangerous. All oh right, my so... god! I might. You mean I might get dirty? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! That would have been really unpleasant. <laughs> uh, so let's jump ahead to. Yes, yes, yes. We got to get through this. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> it isn't about changing gaming from the outside. It's about strengthening the best parts of gaming that already exist. The desire to engage in choice-driven narratives from a place of understanding and agency. From the conversations I've had, feminists in gaming have failed to effectively answer another fair and fundamental question. Why the hell should we care if women play video games when nothing seems to be stopping them from buying a console? Fair question. Mm -hmm. That is a, I think that that is a fair question, and I'm glad that Liana K considers it to be a fair question. Again, anything that I skip over or I don't speak to is me basically not disagreeing with her, at least on the individual argument that she's making. Um, I think the main problem comes that she is, as we established in the beginning, she has a um, place that she's coming from that is something that is hard to ignore. Uh, so let's see what she follows up with. The answer, in fact, is pretty simple. Retail prices of games aren't rising as quickly as production costs, so high-end games have to sell more and more copies to continue to be profitable. Well, there's absolutely nothing wrong with a hobby being a guy thing. That essential sales growth is likely going to come from women since the male consumer base for games is far more saturated. All right, before we get into that, um, all right, so she's making the argument that because gaming uh, video game prices haven't changed much, but the production values have gone way up, then what that means that the gaming companies are not profiting as much because they're spending a lot more money making the games, but they're not getting as much back. And because men already oversaturate the market, um, then they're going to get more profit by trying to appeal to women gamers. The, there are a few things that I find that's wrong with this from a purely market standpoint. One is that that's the only possible solution. I'll quote, she does present another possible solution, which is uh, that game developers continue to put out games that are unfinished and then include a great number of DLC things in order to make up their uh, margins, which causes people to essentially invest more into the game than what was in originally intended. That's why you might buy a $60 game and then you'll get like oodles of DLC down the line. And then at the end of the day, you might look back and be like, holy shit, I just spent $1,000 on this game. And yes, you can do that because I own Rock Band 3, and I swear <laughs> I spent too much money on that. Mm -hmm. However, um, the argument against DLC is a whole other discussion, but I don't think that it's entirely wrong because it is part of what we consider to be the free market. At the end of the day, people can choose whether or not they want to invest in games that have DLC or whether or not they want to buy DLC. You guys have to vote with, with your dollars with, and then also be really well informed, which is what the responsibility of the game's press is, to tell you when a game is going to have a ton of DLC so you can decide whether or not you want to spend money on it. Broadening or changing the game so that it appeals to women, well, there's some things wrong with that. Uh, in my opinion, it makes, it makes the case or tries to make an argument that somehow women as gamers are different in terms of their tastes. Now, I admit that they are, but some of their tastes are so different that if you try to appeal, like say you're making a new Grand Theft Auto, yes. you're not going to try to put elements of Candy Crush in it because you want to get women gamers on board. That's mm -hmm. not going to make more people buy Grand Theft Auto. What you got to do is you got to either cut costs somewhere else because frankly, I could, I'm, I'm okay with playing games that don't have a ton of fucking cutscenes and Kevin Spacey on the, you know, in the credits because that, that would make the game like a billion dollars more expensive. So they can't just cut costs on developing them. Uh, another thing is, is that when you are developing a game, maybe if you just make it really good, you will attract female gamers, just like you would attract male gamers or gay gamers or gamers of color or whatever the fuck you want to call your demographic. It shouldn't matter. So at the end of the day, that's not really a problem. Maybe the games, games developers are spending too much money making them. Maybe they need to cut back. Maybe they need to get away from these long ass CG cutscenes and like hiring, you know, Hollywood actors who do the voice acting and putting all this crap in there. And most of the time they do that at the expense of the gameplay itself. And maybe if they do continue to do that and those games fail because they're not very good and nobody wants to spend the money, maybe they should fail. Maybe they should fail and maybe more people who are making stuff that is basically at its, at its root a better game because it has better gameplay mechanics, maybe those should succeed. Maybe that's how the market should work. Uh, do you want to say anything else before I uh, continue? 
Well, I was enjoying listening to you. You were oh. you were again. You you were on a, a doge tear. I love your <laughs> doge tears. I hardly get to hear them because usually there's like four other people talking. Um, <laughs> but yeah. when you get going, it's amazing. Uh, no, I just wanted to say I agree with your points. I there are games that your sort of regular non gamery type of uh, girl likes to play. We're talking things like Temple Run, like apps and shit like that. Mm -hmm. And then you've got your other end of the spectrum where you've got like Fallout and Portal and those sort of things that are very puzzly and frankly tend to be more male oriented because they require a lot of patience. And then you've got the hyper violent games. What, what I see happening is I see developers being pressured to as Leanna Kay says, make games more accessible for women. And it's actually watering down the parts of the game that made them popular and good to begin with. And that is what I do not want to see. Like you said, you, you can't fucking stick Candy Crush or Temple Run in the middle of a really horrible, brutal zombie apocalypse game. It just, it, it, it's jarring. Exactly. And, I, and a lot of times I can tell when it's happening. And I can say with the games that I really like, as I... This is the thing that gets me. I mean, Leanna Kay, I'm a girl gamer, and Anita Sarkeesian says she is, but we know she isn't. But uh, I I want to see, like, normal. <laughs> this is a terrible thing to say. I want to see, like, regular girl gamers get together. You know, so you really like this game. Would you have not bought it or stopped playing it because the main character had bigger tits or her outfit got more scanty? Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I can't speak for anyone else, but I know my answer would be if the mechanics stay the same it wouldn't make a damn bit of difference. Yeah. It it would not make a damn bit of difference if the gameplay was the same, honestly. Yeah. And think of this too. Let's take the context of gender right out of it. A lot of games are being made these days with the intention of trying to appeal to broader audiences by making them really, really easy and dumbing yes. them down oh God, an yes. incredible amount. And you know, they're trying what they're trying to do is appeal to more normies that are taking interest in video games. So you end up with games that like they they're really kind of numb and mindless experiences because everything is basically handed to you there was well, it's like uh, fast food yeah it's fast food think games. of it like um uh we'll look at like uh some more modern shooters like uh, the call of duty franchise and i'm, I'm not bashing call of duty i'm using it as an example hmm. they made no. a, there was a parody video made a while ago where it was called uh if doom was made today and uh, I think it's something like that, right? And they took the somebody took the Doom game engine and they made a video out of it. Now, in the original Doom, which, by the way, pretty popular, well-known game, not much of a story. I don't know if you noticed, but Doom has no <laughs> cinematics. It just drops you in and you're just fighting zombies and demons. And, and nobody no complains. They, nobody said, no. I want to know what Doom guy's motivation is. What kind of person is he really? You know, why am I here? Who opened the gateway to hell? What do the demons want? Maybe I'm killing them for no reason. None of this existential crises were coming up. You were just like, get the keys, kill everybody in your path, and get to the door. And find that was secrets. Doom. Yeah, yeah, find the secrets. Yeah. That's, that's the whole thing. Well, they made a parody of, of Doom that was called, if Doom was made today, I think, something along those lines. And essentially, it's hilarious because every step of the way, the game stops and tells you how to do something. It's like the tutorial oh level. <laughs> you know, go to the door, and then like you walk over to it, and press the button to open the door, and then you open the door. Pick up the gun, like, and it goes really slow, and nothing gets done. And they also interrupt for cutscenes, like constantly. Like there's, you know, other guys, and they're on their headsets, and they're talking to each other because they basically they're showing you how absurd it's gotten to where video games are so um, they're they're being treated like they have to have so many elements in order to uh, create immersion for the player that it gets to a point where you're just like, when do I get to play this game? When am I going to get to actually start playing? And when you look at older games, and I use Doom as an example, and there's plenty of other ones, like Castlevania doesn't really make any sense in terms of the story, and it wasn't supposed to. You were like some guy with a whip, and you went into a house, and all of a sudden it was like you were just <laughs> killing all the members yep. of the Monsters family. I mean, that was basically the whole thing. But no one said this is a stupid premise they just thought oh wow medusa that's cool and i'm killing them mm -hmm. and they're flying in the room oh shit the green weeper awesome but uh today 
they when they want to make the same game now they're like okay we have this this premise that's actually pretty silly and we have to make it make sense because people need it to make sense and it's going to cost us a lot of money let's get patrick stewart to do a voice let's put all these cg creatures in here let's try to make it all make sense and let's make the set pieces massive even though the freedom of movement is actually quite limited well that might be the problem Liana, it might be the the problem might not have anything to do with you need to appeal to a wider audience of people who you are actually risking the original audience to attract because you might take stuff out of it that they like, but rather the developers have some notion in their head that this stuff is really important, whereas many people would just jump into a game like Dark Souls, not know what the story is, and enjoy the shit out of it. So, you know, that maybe that's the issue. Maybe it's got nothing to do with women aren't being considered for the product. Because you I, could try to make a game appeal to women and it will still... The, you're, you're taking a risk because you don't know if it's going to work. And they may still be like, well, this isn't really what I want for whatever reason. Um, and at the same time, you turn the male gamer audience off because they're like, this isn't like the franchise used to be. Because something exactly. has changed. If you try to make too many people happy, you're going to end up making nobody happy. And that's sort of a truism, as I've observed. And the last thing I wanted to say, because we've got to get on, yeah. I, I'm going to member Barry just for two shakes. Do you remember, do you remember Barry back when you couldn't complete games? Remember do you remember? Yeah, I'm forever? Yeah. I'm yeah. Forever. <laughs> do, you, do you remember when there were games and you'd be talking to your friends like yeah I couldn't beat that last boss neither could I and and this is no longer a thing because no. there is always a way to win the game and then you move on to the next one and you buy it I, there are games in my collection that I probably still have never completed because after like a year of trying with that final boss I just said fuck it but do you remember back when that was okay when it was okay to leave your, your players going fuck you game fuck you I can't beat you. What is wrong with you, Mike Tyson? Punch out, and yeah. uh, and that was what you did. So, but not anymore. You I, gotta let him win. I never finished Katamari Damacy. That, that's the <laughs> one I never finished. But I still love it, and the music is awesome. And uh, yes. yeah, so we'll move on. But that that was He's one that I never finished, guys. What's a game that you guys never finished? And oh, that'd is, be cool. Is that okay? Leave us a comment. All right, let's continue. So gamers have a choice too: more women playing games or more in-app purchases and games that feel unfinished because they're trying to suck more money out of each existing player. And this is me, hoping that was an easy decision for you. If you hate women more than microtransactions, I cannot help whatever is wrong with you. Uh, All right. The assumption so, that again, it's because you hate women. Yep. <laughs> nice. My, the microtrans Either you hate women or you hate micro microtransactions, and that's those Excellent are your Excellent choice. Our sneaker cyanide, yes. Again, I already gave you... A whole bunch of other options. We could just spend less money making them. We could probably tr we could. I think we. It's it's the reason why there's a bubble, is that 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 that's why there's a divide. And you know what? Frankly, these like really big 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 budget games that everyone ends up talking about. I don't like them. Like I never got into Dragon Age. I thought Jesus Christ, these are some of the ugliest visual designs I've ever seen in a game. And the choices, they're not really choices. And the game was easy as shit. I didn't die once during playing Dragon Age Origins. So when the other ones came and simplified the gameplay even more, I was just like not on board. Maybe I'm just too hardcore, maybe, because I like games like Dark Souls and Demon Souls, but I would rather have something that is, first off, shorter, because I think that games often get that, that boast, you know, like a play, um, what do they call it? Uh, you know, the, the length, they boast a length, Often it's artificially inflated. For example, they'll be like, oh yeah, you can play Fallout 3 for like 100 hours. But they don't tell you that like 50 of them are spent running on a plane where there's nobody there. Just yeah. because you spend a lot of your time <laughs> running from one place to another, that doesn't mean that you've actually made the game longer. <laughs> and nope. in, in a really good way. I'd rather have 8 hours of gameplay where it's fun for the whole 8 hours of gameplay. So... Maybe we could work on making it tighter. And that's got nothing to do with hating women. If women like games like, well, how many want to presume what women like? But they tend to like games that involve puzzles and things that are a little bit more on the buildy side, like The Sims and Sim Cities, and, mm -hmm. you know, and like, uh, what's the one? Animal Crossing? Uh, you know, they yeah. like that oh, yeah, kind of stuff. Animal Crossing. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, but guys like stuff where you go out and kill stuff. Sometimes they try to blend that. Like somebody was trying to sell me on Skyrim. I never got into Skyrim. I bought it on my computer. Well, okay, I acquired it on my computer. And I started to play it, but I got a board immediately because I was like, nothing here is a challenge for me. And I don't really care about marrying someone and building a house and blacksmithing all day. Nobody no, <laughs> nobody wants to play an epic mythical quest where you're in a house with a wife and you're having kids and you're blacksmithing all day. I, like, nobody, no. I, I want to go slay dragons and go to dungeons and shit. So I'd rather play something like Gauntlet, which they, you know, they made like a, a recently, they sort of made a new Gauntlet. It was but the, this developer called Arrow, which is awesome. And th again, that one just throws you into the Gauntlet. And they literally like, okay, here are you Warrior, Wizard, Valkyrie, and Elf. Play them, and you just go kill monsters, and you get to the end, and you kill the boss. And I was like, yes, mm -hmm. this I can do. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't need, I don't need anything else. Just I want to play the game. You know, maybe I'll fill in the blanks myself. That's always fun, right? When you don't know enough and you're just sort of like, well, why am I doing this? Oh, I know. I'll pretend whatever. So, I don't know. But getting back to your point about different uh, styles of gaming, you know, you want to build, you want to play puzzles, you want to fight. I think that's why Minecraft was so successful. Because you could, because in the world that it was in, in the little sandbox, so to speak, you could do whatever you wanted. If you didn't ever want to fight a mob, you didn't have to. You could just have a farm and have a garden, and mm -hmm. it was lovely, and do, 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 and it was very pretty. But if you wanted to go adventuring and, like, down into the deep, dark chasms of lava and blah, 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 you could do that, too. And I think that was a really good balancing of it. And part of why I think it was so successful is because it wasn't contrived that way. Yeah. It was the nature of the world. It wasn't specifically saying, hey, ladies, you want to have a farm? You can have a farm. You want to have a garden? You can have a garden. It was, here's a world, do the, what the fuck you want with it. And I think that's why it was so successful. Yeah. And again, they didn't. it didn't have a ton of cinematics, right? They just threw you in there. No, exactly. So exactly. That, that's just it. I don't think that that's necessary. And Minecraft doesn't look like it was a really expensive game. So uh, I don't really know. I know it was like an indie title at first. So that's a pretty good example. Anyway, moving on with... But, yeah, moving on from the women hating. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, nice dichotomy there. Yeah. And there are more business concerns. Women are 40% of the people who actually buy games. Women also make seven. Wait a minute. Women are 40% of the people who buy games, but you are including those who buy games on their phone for 99 cents to two or three dollars. Those women are not necessarily game enthusiasts. And I know Liana Kay knows this because she later on clarifies that statement, or at least mm -hmm. restates it and says that they, these are mostly women who play Candy Crush. The actual enthusiasts make up a smaller part. So I'm just saying that. 70 to 80 percent of overall household purchasing decisions. That yes, women do control most of the spending. About 70 to 80 percent. In fact, um, it's really close to the 80 percent. That not only is most 80 uh, percent of the of the money that exists in the West, at least I don't know about other parts of the world, is spent by women, but it's also money that is spent by men on women. So mm -hmm. most money is spent on women, most of it, like 80%. And she's saying that because women control more of the spending, then that means that they will buy more games. I yeah, no, seriously, they do, does not compute. No, that does not necessarily <laughs> add up. Just because women spend more money doesn't mean that they're spending it on games. What it oh. means is they're spending it in, if they're spending it, they're likely spending it in their own interest. But usually they do it in a more of a nest building kind of framework so if you have a wife and she's spending more of the money she's probably spending it on house stuff and herself stuff <laughs> so oh, yeah oh no and and where she goes next with this uh well i'll wait i'll wait you play the okay. next bit and then i'll make my point that means that many men won't buy things if their partners don't like them when mm, women have a that's not true men will buy yeah, whatever the I fuck know. they want Ex um, unless yeah usually that does end up with them fighting over how the money should be spent which is something that we have seen so if a guy says oh i want to buy another fishing rod uh his wife may be against it because his wife doesn't have an interest in fishing uh although he does and there because she doesn't have an interest in it she doesn't understand the value of why he wants it because it's not serving the greater good the collective good of her and the family 
if there is family. Oh, her, the entire argument that she's leading up to is, just think, guys, if women liked games as much as you did, they'd let you buy more. And mm -hmm. that's good for everybody, except that the games that they want you to play aren't the games you fucking want to play. Exactly. <sighs> because we have to make the, we have to understand the markets are different. And Liana K., you have to understand that despite the fact that you might enjoy games like Skyrim and, uh, you know, these sort of like more, the, these more uh, AAA games, uh, you are not representative of women gamers. Most of them don't prefer those for whatever yeah. reason. Better opinion of games, men also get to play more video games. Get to. And get everybody to. wins! Yeah, yeah get, get to. Get to. Yeah. Get the fuck, man. <laughs> men get to? Really? What world do you live in? Like, that, where you have to give men permission so they get to play more games. Men can play whatever the fuck games they choose to play. Mm-hmm. Wow. And seriously, aren't you sick of non-gamers treating every video game like it's Grand Theft Auto? No. No, because they don't even know what that is. Because they're non-gamers. Yeah. So... And what's non-gamers mean in your definition? Yeah. What is that? Because I think that most most people, I would guess that the majority of people that have access to games, play them. The majority. Meaning that and maybe the only game they play is Grand Theft Auto. I mean, it could be that that could be the reason. Grand Theft Auto is immensely popular, and she does point that out. But a lot of people usually equate most games to also be Call of Duty, Assassin's Creed, and whatever other the AAA titles uh, of the day are. So I don't even... This seems to be a little bit of a, hmm, shall we call a digression? Because it doesn't seem to be related to our overall point. But let's see. Yes, Grand Theft Auto games sell very well. So does Minecraft. The best-selling game of all time is Tetris. Gaming. Yeah, because uh, women like puzzle games, and uh, so do men. So mm -hmm. it's gonna sell better, and it's got super catchy music. Gaming isn't defined mm -hmm. by a single franchise. The flip side of the business numbers is that right now the number of female enthusiast gamers, otherwise known as hardcore gamers, is fairly small. I'm not going to try to sell that 41% of gamers are women statistic because the issues we're concerned with here don't include people playing Candy Crush Saga on their phones. But she did say 41% of gamers, consumer Earlier. gamers are women yep. just a little while ago. Yep. We're talking about women who identify as gamers and who have informed opinions about AAA games and the industry at large. And this brings us to the depictions of women within the gaming industry and the narrative surrounding us. I call this trope the trophy victim. Women are being used as trophies in the gaming industry to show what sensitive supportive guys the men around them are. How do you spot a gaming trophy victim? Take all the qualities of your traditional trophy bride, imagine the exact opposite, and you have the perfect female victim of harassment in video games. Um... There's so much wrong with this. I don't even know where to start. Go, Brad. Like, all right. My first thinking is this. I don't know how she got the imagery to reflect the trophy victim. The trophy victim, it, 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 this is her trope by her definition. So maybe the her sort of like descriptors for what makes that real are uh, specific to her. Because maybe she has... The only thing that she's laid out is that they're used to point at to say, look at how bad the gaming industry is. Here's a woman that's being bullied online or being made into a victim by that culture. And then she says, imagine the trophy wife, revert, like make her a brunette and then like picture her body type to be the complete opposite. Um, I don't think that that matters unless she thinks that Zoe Quinn is an example of this trope because she's exactly. a little bit punchy as well as Randy Harper. But that's well, not I, really, I, I, go ahead. Go ahead. Anita Sarkeesian, Brianna Wu, like who, I have no idea, she's all over the map here. I have no idea really where she's trying to go with this uh, because you're talking about trophy victims of gamer culture and uh, I mean, she's gone several times and said, whoa, you activists, before you jump all over me, but is she seriously pillorying every single one of these? I mean, if she is, that's great, actually, mm -hmm. but uh, I, I don't, I, I don't it seems so contrary to the narrative she's presented earlier so yeah and the one thing that she seems to be missing and i don't know maybe she'll say it but the one thing that she really seems to be missing is the people who are most responsible for this trophy victim trope as she calls it are social justice warriors 
feminists, and women who want to be trophy victims. This is what I'm getting at. Her whole premise is that video games should change, and this is how we can help gamers acknowledge that video games need to change, but her, her, look at the trophy victims. I'm like, well, but but they're on your side, bitch. Like, what are you doing? What mm -hmm. are you even doing here? I have no idea what you're doing here. You are inconsistent. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Brunette, flat-chested, non-sexual, shy, vulnerable, and preferably overweight. And the very fact that we put morality on a woman's weight just shows how messed up this whole thing is. Um, well, I ain't. So. Yeah, I don't know where you're getting at. I mean, if someone if if someone is immoral and overweight, is it okay if we call them out on their immorality? Is that all right? Because Randy Harper is overweight and also a bitch. So is it wrong to call it what it is? Because. The woman happens to be a whale. I mean, it's it's not it's I'm not necessarily making that joke, even though I just made one at her expense as the argument itself. That's just an insult. But the argument is, is that she uses block bots and bad faith arguments to and if at all possible, she would try to ruin the lives of anyone who dares to disagree with her. And the fact that she happens to be overweight and unattractive. Not only might it be the root of her problems, but it's also something that people will, just because they want to vent, they may use it as a way to insult her. That doesn't... I don't think that that's necessarily off the table, um, although I don't really think that it's constructive either. But hey, neither is blocking people online and trying to take away their jobs, which I think is far more harmful, by the way. Yep, agreed. There's a very narrow range of the acceptable types of women who are allowed opportunities in gaming because gaming's trophy victims have to be demure, likable, non-threatening, and not overtly sexual. Wait, she's saying... Wait, what? I gotta go back to that because that was... that, that one, uh, uh, I don't know. Women's weight just shows how allowed? messed up this whole thing yeah. is. We gotta tangle through this logic. It's like... It's like every time she yeah. says something, I'm going behind my TV to find a rat's nest of cords, and I have to like untangle them to find out what cord goes where to see to make sure that all my shit's gonna run right and I'm not gonna start a fire. So <laughs> exactly, I gotta hear this again so that I can untangle her words. Cut the blue one. Hmm. The buzzwords. Cut the blue wire. Yes. Cut yeah. the blue wire. Women's weight just shows how messed up this whole thing is. There's a very narrow range of the acceptable types acceptable. of women who are allowed opportunities allowed. in gaming because gaming. Okay, so she says Wait, there's a very allowed opportunities. In yes, gaming? there's what? a very narrow type of woman, like a like a range of I guess attributes that a woman would have to be allowed to be a woman in gaming. Uh, I'm just gonna go back uh, a tiny uh, bit. Citation tiny needed. Bit. Okay. Yeah. Very narrow range of <laughs> acceptable types of women who are okay. A very narrow range of acceptable types of women are allowed opportunities in gaming. Who are allowed opportunities in gaming? All right. So, what do you mean by a very narrow range of uh, the types of women? I don't know what that means. Well, she's and then she's already put it, she's put it in the context of brunette, flat chested, and a little tubby. So, yeah. does she mean not that? Yeah, I don't know. Um, and then she says that are offered opportunities as women. What do you mean by that? Like, gaming is not a land of opportunity. The gaming is just a hobby. So yeah, I don't. And if you if you write good code, it, your gender is irrelevant. Your sex is irrelevant. However, whatever combination you want to use that day is irrelevant. It's either good or it isn't. Yeah. You know what I, I noticed is that uh, people who are developers and write code haven't become celebrities until very recently. When I used to play mm -hmm. video games, most of the time I had no idea how these things even came to be. Somebody mm -hmm. somewhere made it. I didn't give a fuck who they were. But now it's like, oh my god, Peter Molyneux, everyone, on your knees. Like, I don't give a shit. You know, you haven't made a game in forever. Fuck off. I don't care who you are. Um, now that we know, we actually end up caring more about the devs than the actual products, which is strange. So I don't know what Leanna Cuddy's getting at, but let's yeah no let's she's see. let's just keep forge forge on yeah <laughs> because gaming's trophy victims have to be demure, likable, non-threatening, and not overtly sexual. Gaming's trophy victims have to be all those. I think things. Zoe Quinn was fairly overtly sexual, and huh. not to too fine a point on it. Yeah, no, right. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm not even being a bitch here. I'm just no, the facts no, is no. the facts, you no. know. No, no absolutely. And when and I, I wouldn't, you know. I wouldn't consider Anita Sarkeesian to be necessarily shy or demure, although no. she is the antithesis of sexual. Um, but. <laughs> 
And, and, well, it depends on how much you want to pay to have your, your cubes squashed, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> classing it up <laughs> yeah. as but usual. Are, so, the, so then do they not qualify as trophy victims or is the know. just leaving them out? She's, uh, yeah, she's I just mean, making no sense. I think she's just like blah, 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 yeah. blah right now. But, blah, 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 women. Blah, 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 allowed. And I'm like, blah, wait, blah, blah. but. Just, In her world, it's all about who is allowed to do what, right? Men would be allowed <laughs> to play more games. Yes. Women would be allowed to be in there are these invisible like, barriers really who is allowing you to make this liana her husband. That's what i'd like uh, to know i'm sorry oh 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 that's <laughs> fired the, okay. the <laughs> <laughs> as it should be uh yes. all right so playing the video now yes. oh and and does brianna Wu just not qualify at all under any of those because she's missing things chat well chat not says Bri- things Ch- chat um, says brianna is a he so well, you know it's you hiana know. hiana woo um yeah he, yeah exactly <laughs> i'm sorry that's mean uh but <laughs> okay no we're just devolving keep going we got to right. keep it together brian keep it together with me we don't have anybody else I to mean. keep us together because if a woman is the slightest bit interesting she isn't perfectly passive You may have noticed that there's a visceral reaction from gamers when someone wallows in victimhood. Not because gamers are bullies, but because gamers are the victims of bullying themselves. No, here we go again. No, that's not why Leona came. Yeah, no. Here we go again with the, the, hey gamers, I understand you. You were bullied, right? Because you know every single person on the fucking planet has been Mm -hmm. bullied, so... Here, here's common ground. Listen to me. (laughs) Look into my boobs. Eyes, eyes, I mean eyes. Yes. Yeah, no, uh, I think that the reason why gamers don't like people who act like professional victims is because they have an interest in a hobby in which you actually take charge of the of the game. Like, you actually take charge of your experiences within the game. Yeah. So the idea that you could play, let's say you're into competitive gaming, like fight ga- fighting games, for example, which I was really into and still am. In a fighting game, you don't get to cry victim when you lose. Uh, you just have to get good. That's it. So when somebody else comes along and they pretend like they're a victim of something, when you clearly had been in that place where it was like, this is difficult to do, but I'm going to get better, I'm going to practice, and I'm going to overcome these obstacles, which could be anywhere from the controls to my own limitations to uh, beating some opponent somewhere then it's very difficult for you to try to sympathize with someone who hasn't even made the effort that is just coming into a space and crying victim. That means that that person is not necessarily beneath you, but rather it's just difficult to show sympathy towards them because you you would like to see them improve but uh, and, and like be better, but it seems like you can recognize that they're actually satisfied and empowered by being a victim. So it's more difficult for you to say, uh, you know, want to take it easy on them because you know that that's not how you got better. I, I think that that's at least part of it. Does that make sense? I think it does. Yeah. Uh, a, a challenger has appeared in chat. I, uh, do, do we have time for me to bounce this off you? Yeah. Did Leanna Kay lose her job at GameSpot for supporting Gamergate? I don't know. Did she have a job at GameSpot? I had no idea. I, I do not know enough. Again, I know her from old school Ed the Sock days. So, but let's just say for a minute that uh, she did. That does not mean that I don't think she's wrong here. And it does not mean that I do not think that she is presenting a premise fundamentally that I disagree with. The premise being that games should change. Mm-hmm. So... If she lost, if she did lose her job at GameSpot for criticizing Gamergate, and she was doing it in good conscience, well, good for her. Um, to me, it, it's largely irrelevant to what we're discussing here. I'm not, uh, I'm not talking about Leanna Kay here, and I don't think you are either, Brian. I'm not talking about this video because she's a feminist. Uh, I'm talking about it because I disagree fundamentally with the premise she is presenting. Uh, it has some overlap with feminism. I do think that's coloring her. But there are ways to present feminism that are not quite as allow, let, win-win mm-hmm. uh, sort of sham wow saleswoman as this is. So that's just my perspective. Yeah, I mean, I don't have a again like um, if we were just going to oppose people because they were feminists, and we would have gone through Christina Hoff Summers. We wouldn't videos. have picked such. We wouldn't have picked this kind of fruit, would we? You know? Cause, no. Yeah. 
Because she's not low-hanging fruit at all. She makes good points. She's very articulate. She's very attractive. Her production values are good. Um, she's not a total, you know... <laughs> No. She's not a total. I don't think she's coming ditch, from a place of angry uh, of anger or hate. I no, think that she's no. genuinely concerned. The problem is, is that her methodology has issues, and we're trying to no, I just poke think holes she, exactly. in the methodology. I, th I think she's working from a fundamentally flawed premise, and I think that her language is pandering and manipulative. That's mm -hmm. just my perspective. So, yeah, we can go on. All right. The strong reactions are a self-defensive instinct. The desire to reject victimhood. To avoid perpetuating it. Uh, okay, so that yeah. is uh, there. I have problems with that too. There are likely cases where this does happen. However, when you make the implication that this is coming from a place of self-defense, you're also saying that gamers are being reactionary, and uh, that would imply that they're not being rational. The fact is, is that a lot of times when people are refuting Anita's arguments or arguing against people in the game's press, it's not because they just had an emotional reaction and a PTSD flashback to the days when they got <laughs> bullied and put in a locker. Exactly. It means that they've actually looked at the arguments and have discerned that those people are wrong and they want oh, to point it out. But when you pathologize your opposition, you make it much easier to dismiss them. Um, and this is actually, ironically enough, the same thing that women accuse men of doing when they say, oh, you just think I'm acting this way because I'm on the rag. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the same thing. Well, you just think I'm saying this because you think that I was bullied. And there's, I'm still carrying that around. It's, it's wrong on both sides. So. Yes. All right, moving on. That's important to understand. Gamers' role models are fighters. We're the ones saving the innocent. We don't respond well to whimpering. It's too much like real life. Um, I think that people don't respond well to whimpering again because maybe they don't really find whimpering attractive. Um, I, I think that it's got less to do with PTSD and more to do with that's just, like, not cool. I actually have yeah. higher standards on the people that I keep company with. If this is how you're going to act, then maybe... Um, you know, I need to call this behavior out or at least say I, I don't necessarily approve of yeah, you being I, I, like I, a spineless whim whimpering <laughs> asshole. I like, to th I like to think she was making a joke here. I like to think that she was making a little bit of a joke here. Especially yeah. with the, what you've paused on with her tongue there. I actually find her quite fetching in this picture. Okay. She looks like a doll. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's good. But we need to get through this. So go, go. All right, all right. This okay. is where society's expectations of women clash with fundamental parts of the gamer identity. The traditional feminine qualities, passivity, indirection, agreeableness, even in association with pacifism, come into direct conflict with the active, assertive underpinnings of the gamer philosophy of get good. I wanted to make gamers aware of some of the struggles of the first and second waves of feminism because a lot of them had to do with false perceptions of what was natural for women to want to do. At one point, it was seen as natural for women to not want to vote. Oh, or maybe they didn't want to. Yeah. Or maybe they didn't want to. Oh, my God. See, and this is where, again, she was sounding so normal, so rational, so in this, into orbit again. Yeah. This, this, I like how Leanna pattern, Payne right? knows what women wanted back then. No. How, what, what's your time machine look like? Is it like a... Is it like a uh, a car that has to go 88 miles an hour? Is it something you get into and like spin the pedals on like a bicycle? Um, Marty! Or, or is it like a phone booth that you get inside of? Like, I'm just curious. So, yeah, I mean, the, many women didn't want the vote back then because they liked the idea of not feeling responsible or accountable for what that might mean. Also, many of them knew that the vote meant going to war and maybe they didn't want to do that. Uh, there is some peace of mind that you get knowing that somebody else got your back and that could be part of it too. Granted, there were women that also wanted the vote. Legitimately. Mm -hmm, of course. Um, but in, to assume what they wanted back then and how the, the, essentially you're coming from this place of, well, they didn't know that they really wanted the vote because they were just not as, you know, developed and as advanced as we are. They were clearly more primitive. Uh, it's not really fair <laughs> because you don't really have the context of the time period. So, yeah, I mean, there are surely probably a lot of men that didn't really want to go to war, but they had to go. That doesn't mean I, that they wanted to go. <laughs> so. I, I, th I think you're very charitable, Brian. Yeah. I, th I think it's less about not having the context of the time period and not getting off your arse and reading uh, conflicting data so you mm -hmm. have a broader perspective. Because you don't have to dig very deeply to see newspaper columns uh, by women who were against the vote for women. 
Yeah. So it 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 this is just this is rule basic stuff, right? Oh yeah. If if you want to talk about specifically uh, suffrage, then let's talk specifically about suffrage. But to say that well, the expectation that women didn't want to vote. Well, what about the ones that didn't? So this is and again, she's just like. Pew. Mm-hmm. So right. and then and oh, but this is what's going to happen. She's going to come back down and be all normal and nice, and you're going to start to go, yeah, she's making sense. And then she's going to again. Yep. This is this is the pattern. This is this is the way it works. This is how you do it. You basically make a whole lot of reasonable stuff, and then you sprinkle in just a little bit of bullshit. And it's it's sort of like you know getting a Burger King burger. Like you don't know how much uh, cow fecal matter is in there, but it tastes like a burger, so it's all right. This is basically the same. So okay, I know, going. I know. Oh. I just told you a little bit too much about Burger King. Oh no! Um, all right, so we're, let's continue. Oh, and if you want anything uh, to get more out of that, what we were talking about in terms of the vote, uh, again, I would direct you to Hannah Wallen's video. She has tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of citations. Then it was natural for women to want to be stay-at-home moms. We uh, well, it still is for a lot of them. It still is, yeah. Some women both still Both of do. these assumptions are false for large numbers of women, and I believe that the idea that female gamers aren't normal is an equally arbitrary social stereotype. I'd love to live in a world where being a leader meant you could be agreeable and get along with everyone. We just don't live in that world, and I won't apologize for wanting to smash bad guys. That may not be a normal urge for the ideal woman, but it's normal for me. I reject the idea that my idea of normal is somehow unnatural. Mm, okay, so I, I get what you're saying, but this is mm -hmm. the thing, though. We're talking about definitions of normal, and uh, I find that I come across a lot of this with uh, social justice warriors. They wanted to redefine what normal is, and they want to make it something subjective. But there are things like trends and general behaviors in aggregate within groups of people. You're going to find that men have, in general, they have certain preferences, and women, in general, have certain preferences as well. The, just because you don't fall into that doesn't mean that you're a freak, which is something that you seem to equate being abnormal to, mm -hmm. but you're just, you just exist outside that paradigm. Bunny, you are taking stem oriented courses correct yeah yes is it, yes is it a female or male dominated educational space equal okay so in your case it's equal some mm -hmm. people may find in certain other cultures that they may have a different division in terms of how it works out that doesn't necessarily define the normality of the individual that's having that experience maybe people need to worry a little bit less about whether or not they are normal to them or to other people and just be happy because they're individuals and therefore as individuals they have different things about them like I am very abnormal for a Puerto Rican man I don't speak Spanish I don't even have an accent and I don't have an interest in a lot of the cultural stuff that most Puerto Ricans have that doesn't mean I'm a freak that just means I'm an individual with my own interests and I'm actually quite happy with those interests they, the, I wouldn't be on Honey Badger Radio if it wasn't for them, probably. I'd probably just be doing with what is expected of me based on my culture. Wait, P Puerto Rican? Yeah, Puerto Rican. Oh, uh, playing dice in an alley then. Okay. Yes, playing dice in a bling, playing dominoes on the yeah. street. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, listening this is to why I like you. Because I can say music. that you can and say you don't it. even blink. No. Awesome. <laughs> Flipping it's over so dominoes good. in the heat. And, it's so good. Uh, yeah, not knowing a damn thing about economy or politics, <laughs> and oh, not caring. Uh, not the, um, yeah, clearly. Yes. clearly. Playing, playing I just wanted to say the thing that's... on some baseball team. <laughs> that's what Puerto Ricans do. I love this do. show so much. <laughs> I don't get in trouble for shit. I don't get in trouble for anything. It's wonderful. Yeah. Oh uh, no. But the one thing that, that that gets me to to be serious for a second. Uh, did you did everybody catch what Leanna Kay just did there? Because she immediately beforehand, she actually compared her qualities with the qualities of a leader. Uh, yeah. Did we all get that connection. She did. She did. Like she's some kind of leader. Yes. Really? Because did she's she a, make YouTube videos she's an and you were on TV with a sock puppet? Yeah. Like I'm not saying you weren't accomplished, but I wouldn't lead you into a pub or I wouldn't follow you into a pub. So mm -hmm. like <laughs> leader, really? Oh my God. Keep pull the other one. Okay. <laughs> all right. Moving on. Yep. But I hear that it is, all the time, even from other women. 
And this speaks to a powerful truth about why there aren't more women working and playing in gaming. People around us treat us like we're freaks. It's um, oh my no, god, no. Freaks. No, uh, it, they it, don't treat Because us like freaks. human beings tend to put things into boxes, and that has actually helped mm. us survive this long. Somebody in the chat make a dirty joke right now. Okay, yes, go ahead. putting things into boxes. Um, See, thank you. People are going to have assumptions. Who cares? Why do you care that people have these assumptions? Do you want to uh, engineer society to basically be indifferent to men and women no matter what life choices they make? Because that is a pipe dream fantasy that will never come true. There will always be people who are wondering, why do you play video games at your age? Why aren't you more like, th like this kind of person? male or female why don't you have a car yet why don't you have a job that pays at least x dollars a year whatever it is that they're expecting you don't need to meet those expectations the only person that you need to challenge is yourself so why is the, i mean that seems to come from a place of really major insecurity and also maybe a bit of collectivism because you get this idea that the when you're a feminist feminists often see things in in the collectivist format which means that all men are this way all women tend to be this way but they also want to break it and they want to say well we should be able to defy it but most importantly we should be able to defy it and never ever be judged by anyone for it well, that's just not possible there will always be people who will have opinions you just have to grow a spine and deal with it maybe mm -hmm. that should be the goal anyway okay we gotta go <laughs> it's important to be aware that what appears to be self-selection may in fact be responses to strong persistent social conditioning what women want varies from woman to woman but you wouldn't know that based on the current dialogue to get more women invested in video games as a hobby we need to work against the strong negative social conditioning coming from outside gaming Duh, and that's hard oh to God. do when there are a lot of negatives coming out of the gaming press itself. <sighs> yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just, I, the whole, like, I don't have any notes from this point forward. Um, not that I didn't watch it, but from this point forward, it's it's pretty much all more of the same. That's what I wrote, actually, more of the same. Mm -hmm. um, and it's... What she is saying is so contrary to my own experiences, my own rationality, my own perception of the world, that I, I as much as I'm trying very, very hard to see where she is, where she does make good points, because sometimes she does make good points, it, it, it's kind of like, it's kind of like watching a dog lick itself. You know, mm -hmm. I understand why they're doing it. It's just not something I would ever want to do, even if I was that flexible. So yeah. Anyway, yeah. Continue. No, right. I have nothing. I have nothing useful. I'm just. I've the veins in my forehead. I'm just rubbing my forehead. We're good. The enthusiast gaming press spends less time promoting women's projects than it does promoting a narrative about women, and that narrative has been that women are targets of the cruelty of villains, and they need male gamers to save them. Yeah, but that's because they're feminists, and that's what feminists want. They want to put women in the victim role as often as humanly possible and they want to demand that men because they have all the agency come in and save them that's a feminist yeah, narrative wait, wait. it's not a dwarf side narrative this is the regular no. feminist narrative so liana wait, wait, you're making wait, an wait, argument wait, wait. against feminism yeah. right now go ahead and then later on, later on in the video, sorry, she, she's saying, uh, you know, well, we need the male gamers to come in and save us. And then later in the video, she goes on and, and talks about abuse and harassment. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, 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 which is it? Like, are you, you yeah. can't have it again. You can't have it both ways. I say this a lot when I'm dealing with feminist ideologies. You, you really can't have it both ways. And but we'll get to that part of the video, hopefully. Mm. So. Yeah, you notice I'm not saying us this time, because I don't want any part of this. Harassment on the internet isn't unique to video games. Hell, the most recent headline-grabbing case oh, of boy. Twitter harassment was against mm -hmm. Leslie Jones, an actress in a movie. All right, uh, quick point. Leslie Jones was, if you consider that a victim of harassment, what would you consider what Leslie Jones did prior to that to other people? She made constant tweets about... They're basically racist tweets against white people. 
And she oh, they also, were horrible. yeah, and they were horrible. And she also wanted, you know, to send all of her followers after anybody who dared to make anything critical about her. And because none of that seemed to work out, she left Twitter. Does that mean that are you only able to see the harassment going in the direction of Leslie Jones? And doesn't the fact that she's like a a prominent public figure that's probably got millions of dollars in the bank that she's using to dry her tears from having to leave Twitter. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, have something that are, are your priorities in the right place here? Because I don't really see Leslie Jones as a victim. I see her as a participant in a discussion that Thank turned into you. an argument that she just decided was too much for her because she actually is a coward. I saw a lot of people behaving badly in that, and she was one of them. So. Mm -hmm. I'm I, at this point. I'm like all of you. You all deserve whatever you get at this point, uh, if, to a greater or lesser degree. Yeah. Um, I do. I think that Yiannopoulos should have been kicked off Twitter. I think it was inevitable he would anyway, given that he was a provocateur, and I think he, even he knew that he would eventually be kicked off Twitter and be able to use that, yeah, to oh, yeah. To, to promote his narrative. So I, I don't think he lost much. I, in that respect, but that whole thing, and I was at ground zero watching it, and I, I was just, it was scrolling by me so fast on my Twitter, I'm like, what the hell is actually going on here? What what Harambe and everything, and and link to nudes, and I'm like, do not click, nope, nope, nope. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Leslie Jones nudes? No, <laughs> I'm good, thank you. I'll moving take on, your word on. for it. Yeah, exactly. Female sports reporters face serious on-the-job harassment, as do female news reporters. And uh, wait, based on what? Uh, citation needed, Liana. I just want to yeah, know, as, as opposed to their male counterparts. Yeah, as opposed to their male counterparts. Like, what are you talking about here? What is harassment? How do you define it? Uh, is it only because they complain more? Because if men deal with harassment and don't say shit, does that mean it doesn't exist? Okay. Well, anyway, moving on. We all know the infamous case of Gian Gomeshi, the faux leftist entertainment personality who apologized for sexually inappropriate behavior against a female employee to avoid a second trial. Here we go. Yeah, but I can't the... believe she actually used Gomeshi. <laughs> oh, what are you thinking? Oh, Bad move. Like, yeah, you, this is this. And again, cards, cards be tipped right there. Like yeah. if you if you were actually using Gameshi as an example of of anything going <laughs> going right on your side or wrong on your opponent's side, it you have failed. You have failed. You have not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is not one of those things you should use. Yeah, because there's so much going on there that you're just gonna look like an idiot. And she's Canadian, right? Yes, she is. So she fucking knows the whole story. If she, this if isn't, she, well, this isn't if like she some Texan it, who might not know. No, no. If she chose to follow it very closely, um, then yes, she should know the whole story. But it did take... By the way, guys, if you don't know the Gian Gomeshi case, the best way to follow it would be to go to Diana Davison, Feminism LOL. She did a whole series on the Gian Gomeshi case. Very detailed. She goes through it very well. We also did a show on it, too. I don't remember when it was, though. But I'm sure that there is a Honey Badger show about Gian Gomeshi's case. Mm -hmm. And basically, it's like this. He was accused of uh, sexual battery and all kinds of shit by some movie star from the TV show Trailer Park Boys and some other woman and it turned out that all of these accusations were bullshit because those women knew that he was into some freaky like kind of violent uh sexual stuff and they were also into it and they also wanted to be fucked in the ass and all kinds of stuff like that so mm -hmm. they they were into it this was consensual the only thing is is that basically they got burned because he got tired of fucking them while choking them out or whatever it is they were into and they were mad and decided they wanted to take him to prison and it did not work but here's the reason why featuring the meshi in this way is a, an, a huge fail right off the top because the reality is that nobody we don't know what Gameshi did or did not do but we do fucking know what his accusers did and did not do mm -hmm. because it came out in court with huge amounts of evidence it's why when i talk about Gian Gameshi, i don't talk about uh what he did or what he didn't do i've never liked the guy i've never listened to his show i always thought he was a little creepy and just kind of gross uh 
my personal opinion. Yeah. Yeah. However, when this came out, I was like, okay, we do not know what happened. So we all need to just calm our tits, don't we? Yeah. And the social media storm was like, it was my, it, it was mind boggling. And most of it was hang him high. Mm -hmm. Do I think, do I think that he was potentially inappropriate with him? I don't know. I think it's possible. I, I don't know. Do I think that the evidence has led me to have conviction that they colluded, lied, were uh, revenge based? Yes, absolutely. So that is what I focus on. Yeah. Also, what's with this weird photo that she chose for Gina Gomez? Like with the bear and like. Oh, that's that? the legendary bear something ears or something. Okay, I don't okay. Know. I, I was just wondering. It just seems like a weird. And he's got like this like come into my basement grin like i don't know oh no <laughs> i know but I, I know. i'm i have i have certain interests all right well anyway <laughs> okay oh no keep and going just because you hear more about the harassment of women it doesn't mean that men aren't also harassed it happens less often because there are fewer women in positions of real power but it does happen uh wrong she, it happens yeah, more she, often because women are she, more likely to bitch about it yeah she just had to get that in there right yeah well, it doesn't happen as often because just a reminder, reminder, women aren't in as many positions of, of power. In case you didn't know, guys, just a reminder. Mm -hmm. this, her, her, and, and her entire language is peppered with these little sly reminders of her fundamental perspective, right? Yeah. And yeah. by the way, by the way, Leslie Jones and a bunch of anonymous trolls, I, I mean, I, and I hesitate to even use the word trolls, uh, people on the internet that are normies or just people on Twitter and Leslie Jones who has more power Leslie Jones has bit millions of dollars everyone knows her name she was in Ghostbusters a, a summer blockbuster that didn't make any money um, but she was in it anyway and she's appeared on several TV shows and everyone loves her she has lots and lots of adoring fans does she have more power or less power i know that's difficult because she's a woman hillary clinton gets a lot of hate online deservedly so but she is secretary of state and could become our next president does she have power because or does she not because she's a woman i'm not really sure how this works out some feminists ignore or deny these statistics because they feel that it takes away from the fight against the power imbalances that result in women being the majority of sexual harassment cases. No, it's because feminists need women to be victims in every conceivable circumstance and to include men in, in the victim paradigm will actually destroy the victim paradigm because then we'll find a situation that they have decided must be a gendered situation mm -hmm. and they will have to accept that it is not a gendered situation. And that, in fact, women are more seen as more often to be victims because women choose to see themselves as victims more often. And men tend not to because they're not going to get sympathy. So why should they speak up? <laughs> That's basically yeah. the way it works out. I would also like to say, just as sort of a, a top-down perspective, when you view your body and your sexuality as fundamentally more valuable than a man's, then you are naturally more sensitive to any kind of affront against it and i think that's why there's more reporting by women because it, men simply don't have the same generally the same kind of uh of uh, bodily autonomy that women cling to mm -hmm. you know i if i accidentally brush up against a, a woman's tit it it's <gasps> but you know i've sacked guys accidentally and they've gone it's okay it was an accident. It's all right. Yeah. So. Have you ever brushed up against a woman's tit? Have I? And and, and like and she's gotten like upset like visibly. Yes. Okay. No, no. But I'm just wondering because I mean. No, but it's I don't now, but it's also because I I used to I, <laughs> I used to be really seriously butch looking, mm. um, and I'm not now, but uh, because it's a protective camouflage to appear more feminine, because it 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 disguises the actual teeth right if i look it Balls. does it disguises them i truly i find i get away with more shit the more feminine i look which might be a show for another day but the more masculine i appear the less shit i can get away with it's 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 a commentary on society yeah, i yeah. swear to god oh no i mean yeah i get that 
I was just when I when you described yourself brushing against a woman's breast, I immediately just had this picture of Justin Trudeau waltzing over and elbowing some shit. Oh, Brasso, um, yeah. Yes, yes. Oh, elbow gate. Oh, but he uh, didn't get away with it because he's practically a woman. Well, yeah, so. that's why he did. I mean, they were. Yeah. He basically was like, "Oh no, it's fine because I, I love I respect women because <laughs> totally. of, because it's the totally. current year. You have nothing to worry about." Um, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but is this an effective way of dealing with the problem, or would a more holistic, consistent approach be more successful? Why can't we just say that harassment of anyone is wrong? Wouldn't that be an easier thing to enforce? Well, let me ask you this, well, Liana. Is, is the words. Mm-hmm. First off, enforce. is harassment... How do we define harassment? That's the first thing I want to know. What is harassment? Secondly... Is harassment wrong to the point that it needs to be enforced against, right? There needs to be in something uh, put in place to enforce, I guess, a uh, threat of something against people who would dare commit the, the heinous crime of harassment. So I need to know what those things are. Like some people would say harassment is when it's sort of like repeated and you know behavior uh, like if there's some troll who just can't stop fucking with you online um, that would be one person's definition but then like why wouldn't you just close your eyes walk away from the computer block them whatever then your problem will be solved uh, or does something need to be done from the outside to the person that is committing the harassment if you do that then how do we know the difference between someone who's genuinely been harassed and someone who is claiming to be harassed because maybe they just want to fuck with somebody else. You, you just move into really, really like fuzzy territory when you start using these words like harassment and enforce. And I, I just go ahead. I, I know we need to move on. Uh, if you don't mind me getting a little squishy with you for a second. Mm -mm, let's get squishy. It is. Thank you. <laughs> it doesn't happen to me often. I, uh, it actually legitimately terrifies me. That how I feel about something could put someone else in jail or in custody, could cost them their job, could cost them their livelihood. Because I'm not perfect. Mm -hmm. And I do lose my temper occasionally. And I do feel wronged occasionally when later it turns out that it was a misunderstanding or a mistake. But as someone who tries to be ethical and is also aware of her own shortcomings, I find the whole... If you feel harassed, it was harassment. I find that terrifying to me as somebody, again, who, who is attempting to not be evil and destructive because all it takes is one slip on my part and I could ruin your life or any other man's life. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to make it all about the women. I'm trying to say that I, I think more women should consider the position of monstrous authority that we are placed in and if they really trust themselves with that because I'm very disciplined and I don't trust myself yeah I agree so moving on I'm done being squishy okay. it's let's, just let's, that that honestly we need to unsquish yeah. <laughs> but I appreciate <laughs> okay. that honest uh, do you mean, do that you mean we're getting hard again mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> of course <laughs> the idea that Threatening a woman is somehow more wrong than threatening a man is a form of what's called benevolent sexism, an attitude towards women that feels favorable, but that actually treats us as weak and in need of men's protection. Playing up harassment of women while downplaying harassment of men is treating women like we need to be protected by men. Yeah, but that's what feminism does, Liana. See, she's running yeah, into this thing where she doesn't realize that she's actually making arguments against legit but this real is the feminism. rocket zoom yeah this is the rocket zoom she sounds so good for this little part and then watch in the next clip it'll she'll be gone again <laughs> yeah i don't i don't really like the term benevolent sexism it sounds too much like oh reverse God. racism okay uh, okay okay i was go, thinking go about this today benevolent sexism okay if you say benevolent sexism is a thing and you say gynocentrism gynocentrism is not a thing it's they're the same fucking thing. Yes, we are talking You're about talking gynocentrism. About the same thing. We are talking about gynocentrism, not benevolent sexism. Yeah, but and we need our own words because you you men's when, use the gynocentrism. When you call so it, yeah, because when it. you call it benevolent sexism, <laughs> you're basically saying that it's something that 
in many ways, you're saying that it's something that only well-meaning men do to women. Um, mm -hmm. And that men can also, uh, you would have to find ways in which men can also benefit from benevolent sexism. And I'm not really sure that that would work out. But gynocentrism is actually a better fit, Liana. But then you'd have to accept that gynocentrism is real. Yeah, but um, that's not their their word. That's, no, not, that's not our word, word, Brian. We yeah. need our words. It has to have an ism that, yeah. that we make, not that you make. Uh, Black Knight Fool says that benevolent f feminism is benevolent sexism. The entire movement is benevolent sexism. Actually, I think that feminism is traditionalism on steroids, i.e. gynocentrism. It's, it is gynocentric. That's the whole reason why feminism even picked up any ground. It's the reason why when it, the, the time period during ancient Rome in which Christianity was coming into being and it was just like a cult, it was competing with another religion called Mithraism or Mithra. And yeah, Mithra was uh, yep. a soldier religion that only men could do and women were not allowed in. But other than that, they were mirror images of each other, this Mithra and Christianity. But because <laughs> Mithra did not include women, it died. Christianity flourished because it's gynocentric and it allowed women in. And women have power within, especially to make religions grow. In fact, with, and I know there's a bit of a, of a, of a uh, divergence here, but I am of, of the belief that um, religion persists because women teach it to their children and they keep the, the thing going. It's sort of like the trope of the, 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 the family where the mom says, we need to go to church and make sure that all the kids go to church and the father goes but he doesn't really want to so he like sleeps through mass and all that um it's because i think that that comes from that place and the men go because you know they want to keep their wives happy so that's gets kind of centrism really but i, I, I did a piece uh, i did a piece on uh, ayan hirsi which however you may feel about her i tried to present a balanced opinion but uh, I did read from her book, Infidel, uh, where the radicalization of the men where she was living actually came at the hands of the women, uh, mm -hmm. who essentially told the men, we don't need to obey you unless you obey Allah. And we don't think you are because this imam says you're not. So if you want us to be obedient, good little wives, you're going to follow him too. And I do a little piece on that. And I, try, I talk about that a little bit. It is, is funny because in, in my video on it, I presented a, it isn't a picnic for the men either. And I got very little back to the fuck I am. So that probably has something to do with it. But uh, when uh, Allison and Karen, you present a similar thought, it, uh, you get much more of a backlash. So. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, what are we going to do? <laughs> we'll just keep on fighting that. That's fine. All right. That's true. Keeps things interesting. All right. More words. When things get rough for a guy who writes about games, the expectation is that he puts his head down, rides out the screaming death threats and invasion of his privacy, and gets back to work. When a woman becomes a target, it's grounds for a mass media freakout. Being denied the opportunity to show that we can be as resilient as men in gaming holds women back in an industry where, like it or not, you earn your cred by showing that you're tough. Harassment targeted at anyone needs to be seen as unacceptable. If it's wrong to do something to a particular human being, it's wrong to do to any human being. No exceptions. As long as we treat men and women differently in this regard, women can't be seen as true equals in the workplace because men assume we need their protection. No All right. I have no problem with any of that stuff. I'm just pausing for the banana. No, no, no. I, I had a point anyway. I agree with what she's saying in principle, but the one point that she is not picking up on is the differences in the definition of harassment and abuse mm -hmm. between men and women. And as long as there is a different set of criteria between men and women for what constitutes these things, it will. you can't just say, well, it's wrong when it's about against anyone. Yeah, okay, yes, that's true. However, there is one set of the population that seems to think that more is wrong than the other. Yeah. So how do you deal with that? How do you do if if I call you a fucking faggot, I don't think you're going to be particularly offended by that because mm -hmm. we're friendly and I'm probably going to be saying it in either a demonstrative or funny way. Mm -hmm. uh, there if there are people if I say, How you doing, you stroppy cunt? Um in the same tone, meaning the same thing, and they will honestly be offended and upset yeah so how do you how do you bridge that gap how do you bridge the, the gap that there is a different benchmark between the levels of abuse a man should or can suffer without reporting or 
being offended and the levels a woman can or should suffer. I, 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 I agree with her in principle. I don't think it's realistic given that the standards are so different between men and women currently. Yeah, which we, we pointed out earlier. It's, it's the women are more likely to, they are more likely to get offended at stuff and be more vocal about it. And they're also more likely to demand um, changes to the environment to better suit their comfort, essentially. And um, men are more likely to understand that those things will probably not be done for them. So they are more likely to grow a thicker skin and just exactly. kind of endure it. So when you consider that, you're, if, if you say uh, harassment should be wrong for everyone, that is a nice sentiment, but in practice, it may not work out because you're going to hear more noise from one side of the aisle than the other. Exactly. You said it better than I did, Brian, as usual. <laughs> so, oh, no, no, no. So I let's... said the same. All right. No, not so only is this really condescending, but it makes the harassment worse. It gives the trolls more attention. It becomes a bigger deal when a woman is a target, so we're higher value targets. Trolls love those model and harassment of women's stories. They think they're hilarious. But this mixed message regarding accept- Well, I think part of the reason why trolls do do, do that is because they re realize that most of the time, like if there was a woman who was uh, harassed online and it was uh, something that actually like really upset her and drove her off the internet or maybe she made an attempt at suicide like uh, that woman who made the artwork of steven universe stuff on tumblr and uh because she didn't make the characters fat enough fat yeah. enough right she got a lot of shit for it and she ended up attempting suicide and she made a video from her hospital bed she didn't really get that much harassment there was probably some people who thought she was faking it or trying to call her on her shit but in general it wasn't that bad but when people lie and they try to institute change in an industry against the people who populate that industry, like in the case of Anita Sarkeesian and Zoe Quinn, who essentially cried victim, or Brianna Wu, who straight up lied on national news mm -hmm. and said that you know she had to leave her house while filming from her fucking house. Um, she, <laughs> that is actually encouraging oh, the trolls to go after him because they want to expose their bullshit. And they also don't believe that those people are as thin-skinned as they are pretending to be. They're testing the waters. They're, um, they, maybe they genuinely are enjoying it. And sometimes, because these people make such gigantic productions about it, they actually enjoy the, I, the idea that they can have such an effect on a person. That's why they call them lol cows, isn't it? So Yes, that's, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. I was, I was going to make the point about, you know, you have been trolled. I, I'm not even very good at social media. And I know when you are being trolled, do not respond yeah. do not make it bigger this is like rule one i had I, i've only really been trolled once and uh just by somebody and, and and they were a bit mean right because they're a jenny mcdermott fan that's all i need to say Ooh. and uh they came into i know they came in, it's like saying someone's from canada but uh <laughs> but they came into my comment section and and just started random in, randomly insulting but i recognized it as trolling almost immediately i always give the benefit of the doubt at first and say well what do you mean what are you trying to say mm -hmm. and then when it becomes clear that they're just a troll I'm just like okay so I'm just gonna treat you like you're a troll now you don't give them more fuel this is the nature the more you react the more people are gonna go hey we got a live one guys 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 come over here come over here mm -hmm. so I'm not saying harassment is right but I, I'm saying like don't go all Amy's baking company you know what I mean yeah like yeah all right, let's move on. Thank you for that. Acceptable oh, behavior no based on gender has another negative impact as well. Gamers are getting confused regarding what behavior is in fact acceptable. I can't even keep track of who is an acceptable target of what insult this week. In talking to other gamers, I frequently hear the question asked, why can a woman say hurtful mean things to me, but I can't do the same thing to her? Why is that equality? It isn't. It's benevolent sexism. No, it's kind of centrism. <sighs> it's kind of centrism. And well, you know what? Let's I'm just going to let her play the next bit. Can I can I say one thing? Yeah. Starts out video saying gaming needs to change. Mm -hmm. Two thirds through video says, why are male gamers so confused about what good behavior is? Yes. We're like, going to get into that. Oh my God. 
what? I'm going to cry. Okay, go on. Okay. Guys, I hope you stay with us. We're only going for a little bit longer. Yeah. So the rules regarding conduct in the gaming community need to be clear, simple, and consistent. And the same for everybody. And there go the activists getting mad at me again. People, this isn't about housing allowances or judicial system failures or real life physical assaults or reproductive rights. I'm with you on that. On those points, being polite, quiet, and patient hasn't gotten the job done. But well, actually, those things could be something you could discuss if you do so honestly and you bring forward facts and evidence. Um, and you're also willing to, again, see women as whole people and not victims because you'll find that in many of those cases, such as reproductive rights, your biggest opponents are other women, not a bunch of old white guys in suits like you guys continue to imagine. People who are enacting policy and, uh, and law that are signing off are just responding to who the, whom they believe to be their constituents. The people who you really want to change the minds of are the people who are on the ground like just regular folks that actually go out and vote and they decide on what their belief systems are. And those are the people that you want to talk to and they don't respond well to like crazy ass like... Uh, you know, uh, passive aggressive and otherwise really angry kinds of messages that usually comes out of protest. Look at yeah. PETA, for example. They're not going to change many hearts and minds uh, talking about, you know, the the uh, the meat industry in the way that they do. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> let me <laughs> go ahead. It's true. It's true. And you've inspired a thought, a thought in the, the sludgy murk of my brain meats. I'm actually, I, I had this, I had this spark of feeling actually empathetic toward Leanna. Because if you look at how many times in this video that it's almost self-referential to, hey, I'm still a feminist, I'm still an activist, guys, I know you're going to be all over me, but this is what you need to think about. It's like, she has to keep straddling the line of, well, just because I'm not shitting on gamers doesn't mean I'm not a feminist. And what a terrible position to be in. I'm actually seeing things a little from a different perspective now. I wonder how many more times in the video she has to go back and say, but, but feminists, I'm totally still with you. And, and you guys, I'm totally still on your side. It's just, I'm, I'm just being nice to these guys, right? We're just, it, it's kind of having to go back and forth to identity politicking. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, yeah, no, it just came to my mind. And I'm like, why is she doing this? Why does she, why does she feel the need to give a shit so much? I don't know. But uh, keep going. I'll, I'll keep that right. in the back of my brain. That's not what we're dealing with here. If you want to go scream at the government or the billionaire class or other controllers of real world systems of oppression, knock yourself out. Real world systems of oppression? Mm -hmm. Citation needed. Yeah. Um, the billionaire class? I don't buy it, but that's just me. The government? Yes, you have a stronger case there. But doesn't that mean arguing against Justin Trudeau? All right. Well, anyway, moving on. <laughs> I I'm wish. all for that. <laughs> yeah. Gaming doesn't exist in a vacuum that's exempt from those problems, but people use gaming to try to temporarily escape those problems. So bringing your unchecked outrage here is just seen as dropping a turd in the proverbial punch bowl. Uh, I don't necessarily, again, I said this before, I don't necessarily believe that people play games specifically to escape problems. I think that people who do use... Uh, uh, escapism excessively actually run into a risk of never actually confronting problems in the real world. I think that most people just play games in the same way that they watch television or read books. They enjoy the material itself. This The impl implication that people play video games to escape means that the game the game's enjoyment matters less than the desire to get away from the real world. Whereas I think that the opposite is likely true. This is why people are choosy about what they choose to buy. Mm -hmm. I think that people play games because they like the games first, and then perhaps the desire to escape or relax or otherwise rest their brain or refocus their energy is secondary to that. So, yeah, those are my thoughts on the whole escapism argument. I mean, I'm sure it happens, but I don't think it's that common. Well, I, I play video games too relax and escape and access parts of my brain that don't get accessed normally. I, I actually find it very balancing and healthy uh, because the, there are parts of my brain that are constantly engaged and sometimes I just got to go for the muscle memory and the quick reflex stuff and it just makes me feel all calm. So for, for me that I, n n my life isn't especially stressful, not even now where I've got like midterms and labs and I mm -hmm. haven't really slept and it's all good. But anyway. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I do play to to provide I would say to provide an altered experience and blow off some steam but the way that Leanna continues pushing this and using that more than once the escaping well that feeds back into her narrative at the beginning of the video of painting gamers as antisocial losers mm -hmm. who have been bullied and picked on so and this is what i mean she's a she's a virtuoso of like tying these threads throughout the whole thing and unless you are extremely analytical and you're if you're just watching her for entertainment you, you're probably never going to pick up on half this shit. her, her neurolinguistic programming is like top shelf and uh, and and how she relates things back it's it's amazing actually mm -hmm. just just from a, just from an observational standpoint she's very good at what she does but yeah but here we get back to the of course they of course gamers do it to escape because we all know what society thinks about gamers and how gamers feel yeah yeah okay continue all right. just just point it out no matter how you look at it, there's no getting around a very simple fact. Women can't be seen as leaders if we're not given a chance to lead. If we're expected to let men fight our battles as soon as things get tough, we aren't given the opportunity to show what we can do. We can't collectively get used to the realities of leadership where women are concerned, including the reality that leaders make mistakes, if we don't have the opportunity to get used to women in accessible high-profile positions. Yeah. Wait, what? G yeah, there, there's the leader is, thing again. Is gaming serious business? Yeah, I didn't it's know it was so thing. super serial. It um, is. It's, it's super serial. <laughs> super serial because raisins. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Member <Mamba> pig. <laughs> All right, moving on. Yes, I know it's long, Allison. We'll we'll wrap it up. Do you want to do a part two, maybe? Uh, Allison's like this stream is too long. It's only been two hours, but. Two, two, two hours and six minutes or something. Yeah, we were, yeah, we were right. two or three minutes late. We were. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll like wait until she goes to the next big point, and then what we can do is uh, we can quit it before the wrap up, and uh, maybe the next time we can just go through the wrap up and sort of like go through that on another video or something. Is that cool? Sounds good. Sounds all right, great. All right. So I don't really want to go too much longer either. So no, I got to do stuff. Yeah, me too. Running your own of ship really sucks and we need the private support of the people around us providing us with positives reasons to keep going that balance out the overwhelming negativity that even comes from other women but men can't what do you mean even comes from other women are you surprised yeah exactly <laughs> look at her language look at her language she is so transparent at oh my god to me. Like... there's so much negativity you guys it even comes from women i know I know. From women. Stay seated. Don't I know. freak out. Have you got your women do it too? It's so crazy. It's like infectious. It spreads from the men, and then the women get this idea. Actually, she she mentions this in the trash talk bit. I want to get at least that far, um, <laughs> yes, because that's that's a good one. Uh, female okay. negativity, not yes. real. Yeah. No female <laughs> negative. What? It, what? Even the women. What? Okay. <laughs> solve these issues on our behalf because that perpetuates the association between leadership and a male voice. If you're talking for a woman, you're talking instead of a woman. Milady. You're denying yeah. that <laughs> woman the opportunity to speak for herself and draw her own praise as well as her own criticism. This doesn't mean that people shouldn't do nice things for the people in their lives. It means that we're right in the way we're expected to treat women. We're wrong about the extra social allowances to treat men like crap. The very same developers that are scolding their players for current behavior have cultivated a trash talk culture that's gone way too far. When you cultivate a mindset of GTFO, what do you expect is going to happen? A certain amount of good nature trash talk in matches isn't harmful, but it's gone way beyond that. <laughs> Flat out bullying behavior is using trash talk as cover. And some women now even feel the need to out trash talk the guys to prove they fit in. All right. Well, so we're on trash talk. All right. So first of all, she makes the assertion that people should, we need to make rules of conduct in gaming culture. And the reason why is because we need to protect people's feelings. And I have been given this some <laughs> thought over the years, actually. There was a time where I thought people should not be mean to each other, right? This is, I think, a lot of things that people probably had at some point a phase where they said, you know, it would be nice if people were nice to each other. But the reality is, is that no one owes you anything. They just don't. So if, 
let me put it this way, and you tell me what you think about this, and I'll, I'll let you speak. Okay. All right. If you encourage people to be nice to each other without necessarily enforcing anything or penalizing people who aren't, and you get people to be nice to each other, that has value for the people who have made the choice to be nice to each other, the, the choice to do that. If you create a rule that says people have to be nice to each other, otherwise there are penalties, like you get removed from the game or something like that, if you don't do it, and of course, what constitutes nice is a little bit hard to define, and then all of a sudden what you get is everyone's nice to each other, what value does a person who is choosing to be nice have over someone who is being forced to be nice? Does that make sense? It's it like, does. <laughs> it, it, you know what I mean? Like, if I choose to be good to someone because I have the freedom to do so, and then so I do so of my own free will, I think that that's actually got a lot more value than if someone is basically, yes, I'm being nice to you, but that's only because it's a gun pointed to my head to do so. So, you know, like, what do you prefer? I mean, if you want to cultivate a culture where people are better with to each other, the more power to you. But the thing is, there will always be people who just don't care. So the only thing that you have left is you either tell other people to try and grow a thicker skin to deal with the situations where those come up, or you actually have to enact force on everyone. Um, I'm not really sure that that's even worth the resources and that it's possible to do. All right, Bunny, so if you want to say anything, go ahead discernment discernment word of the day yay <laughs> discernment um you have to have the ability to discern what someone's intent is behind the words they're actually using i have and women are very good i'm using a generalization here but women do tend to be a little better at this i mean we do have more we have we have more neural pathways devoted to language it's just the way it is um that's why we talk more actually but uh we are very good at using exactly the right perfect words and saying the meanest cuntiest thing ever and that that's this is total chick thing it's just use nice words and you can still say whatever you want whereas men tend to be more of the opposite and then to rely on other people interpreting their meaning without using 12 words to say it yeah, the saying goes, men never say, never mean what they say. So if they call you, you know, they say, hey, man, you cocksucker, that doesn't necessarily mean they actually believe that about you. And women never say what they mean. <laughs> so And no, and I think that's quite true. Yes. And I, I am a little bit of an exception. But again, that's because I've everything I've learned, I've frankly learned from men. So <laughs> mm -hmm. the way I interact with the world is quite masculine because that is what I've learned. I have learned that when someone calls me a shithead, I have to go, okay, I have to read the body language. I have to read the context and go, okay, what are they saying here? It is also though, and this is a skill that I have that many people don't have. When people compliment me, I also have discernment with that. Because mm -hmm. people can say very nice things to me, but I evaluate the context, I evaluate the body language if I can, I evaluate the tone, and that enables me to uh, discern how much weight I'm going to give that compliment. And women use compliments like fucking stilettos. We do. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Not just, yes. Yeah. Daggers. Uh, daggers. Very aerodynamic right between, ones. Right between the ribs mm -hmm. into the ventricle, right? That's right. And that's why strippers make so much money. Strippers don't just, oh, this is what people don't understand <laughs> about gynocentrism. This is maybe for another show. But you don't make money as a stripper just by having a hot body and grinding up against that pole. No, where you make your money is going around afterward and sitting with the men and going, what do you do? Oh, that's so great. Can you tell me more? And that is where you make your fucking money. Mm -hmm. And it's it's in uh, using very pretty words and very pretty language, getting men to say things, but not requiring men <laughs> to speak the words you want them to say. It, it's difficult to explain, and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, it's late in the stream. But what I'm trying to say is it's not, uh, it's women are masters, masters of the language. 
Yep. You always have to be careful. I trust, I actually trust a woman being cunty to me more than I do one being nice to me in terms of words. Uh, in terms of actions, it's the same either way. All but, right. uh, yeah. Yes, I and, agree. What? And one of the things I like about Allison is she's she's not excessively nice to me. She's not brusque. She's exactly straightforward. And so there's no push forward and push back. And I respect that. And I can work with that. Uh, there's there's not, you know, she doesn't message me going, so what are you wearing today? So what are you doing today? You know? No, she doesn't like small talk. It's fabulous, and, uh, actually. <laughs> and, and no, and, and I, I think that we tend to like, I, I, compliments are nice, but when it's obviously hollow and like, just like feels yeah. like ass licking, that is just, just pisses me off. I, I don't like to be, uh, I, I don't know why. I mean, I appreciate a compliment, but I don't like to be um, complimented to the point where it's kind of disgusting and you know that it no. just doesn't feel genuine. And, exactly. and we get that sometimes and it's just like, I, I hope you, I hope you're not really like, you know, trying to like <laughs> lick my asshole because that's not cool. Um, when, all right, I, so. when I, when I do compliment though, when mm -hmm. I do, cause I don't, I don't compliment excessively, um, no. because I'm very conscious of this, but when I do, it's meant and it's done for a purpose. Yeah. So. I, I believe it. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, so this will be the end. I just want to get, let her get to the end of the trap okay. talking bit and then we'll yeah, stop. Yeah. Of course. The guys end up getting hurt, but they don't say anything because they're not supposed to. I'm sure I'm not the only one who doesn't like being around excessive trash talk. Eh, well, I mean, you might not mm. be, but I think that most people who generally don't, they just mute their microphones, play different games, find a crowd of people that they're more comfortable with. I mean, like you can, I play Overwatch a lot and I play Street Fighter online a lot. I play fighting games online and I play the shooting games. And you know that people should be vicious there. Um, and I've heard legendary tales about League of Legends and how toxic the community is. But as long as I've been doing these things, I haven't run into anyone that has made me like want to quit Twitter in a South Park kind of fashion. Um, or quit you know, gaming online. I just kind of like don't really have a problem with it. But I do understand that and I am, I am saying that about Leona Kay. I understand that she is a, a little bit exceedingly sensitive about things like tone and the way that people talk to each other. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. she is going to either have to adapt her surroundings, her environment, to better match what she prefers, or she's going to have to alter her uh, tolerance. So, uh, and then I, I think that that's all you can do because I don't think you can really control people. And I don't think you should. And that's sort of like my fundamental problem with the the whole, essentially the thesis of this whole video. Friends should be able to tell friends when they've crossed a line, but that's not happening. Because gaming culture is all about thick skins and potty mouths. And yet everyone, male or female, seems to have some story about not feeling like they belong. Maybe oh, welcome to the human race. Yeah. Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> not belonging nobody this is the grand secret that needs to be told to every child right because you watch tv and you see these great little cliques and dawson's creek i'm dating myself right now <laughs> dawson's <laughs> creek yeah i'm impressed see we need that we need the badger shop quartet we need the yeah. badger shop quartet you can do the falsetto now that would be amazing <laughs> okay i'll i'll do the bass <laughs> and uh, I actually have some good real estate down there. I'm not kidding. I'm but sure, uh, I know. Yeah. But no, it, it, <laughs> what was I talking about Dawson's Creek? They see these kids and, and they all belong and they have these great, these great relationships and adventures. We are, I mean, not to get all black pill or nihilist or anything, and I don't mean it this way, but we're all alone. We all feel lonely. None of us belong totally, mm -hmm. ever. And selling this lie that because somebody says well i don't feel that i belong here it's somehow somebody else's fucking fault no mm -hmm. it's a matter of life and that's why when you do find people who are loyal and who you are loyal to and you have common interests and you have fucking fun together and you can trust them to whatever degree you require that you hang on to them with white knuckle grip as long as you can because they don't come along very often mm-hmm 
Um, but yeah, I, uh, I don't belong. I don't fucking belong anywhere. Neither do you. Neither does anybody. It's, it's we all just need to accept it. Yeah. Okay. Your friends are running you down, and you've been given the message that you're just supposed to take it. So we've got work to do in the gaming community, but it's all achievable. There are plenty more things that I think the industry could be doing to improve things for women, but I wanted to stick to things gamers have control over. The series is called A Gamer's Guide to Feminism, after all. Hopefully I'll be able to do other series that focus more on things like marketing, hiring, and more industry-related stuff. But for now, let's recap. All right, uh, we're not going to do the recap. Yeah. We'll come back to this. It's, it's, yeah. Um, it, it, it'll take too long. So I'm going to stop it here. You guys can watch the original video. It's on Liana K's channel. Overall, um, I will say that I don't have a problem with most of what she says. I do think that she's working from a potentially pretty bad premise. And she does make some assumptions and also puts things in there that may not be that useful, even though they sound really nice such as trying to control the culture itself. Um, yeah. I don't think that you can control a culture that has sort of naturally evolved in the way that it is on its own. And it may not, you may not actually, like when you start your video by saying gamers are the kind of people that don't be like to be told what to do, you don't later in the same video say this is what you guys should probably do. Because yeah. it's not going to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, no, well, there's, you want to say some stuff? Yeah. No, I, I, I've, I've pretty much, I've pretty much gotten it out of, out of my system during the stream, but just to reiterate, I, I, there are some people on YouTube that I think are absolute, you know, pustules on the nose of society, um, and there are others that are even worse, you know. Mm -hmm. Hydrodonitis separativa, just putting that out there, but she isn't one of them actually. Uh, I just think that the premise she is working from poisons any argument number one the premise she's working on poisons everything she could possibly say that could make sense in an objective way uh, two she uses a lot of really manipulative language and that always sets my teeth on edge allowed let leader mm -hmm. um, and this is emotional leading and i am i do not get behind it no no sir i don't think i like it mm -hmm. so <laughs> One last no rubber thing. <laughs> no um, rubber nipples for me. Uh, it, it wouldn't be a Honey Badger stream if uh, we didn't piss somebody off. Apparently, I just got a private message through Twitter that Liana Kay is aware that we are making a video about her. And she made, um, I don't know if these are tweets or what, but she wrote a few things. Well, oh. I just found out that the Honey Badgers are doing a live attack on my video tomorrow. Do you know anything about this? Oh, they're doing it right now. Awesome. Okay, I watched 30 seconds of it, and it's just twisting my words and attacking me personally. These are the people you've associated with. Actually, so. I think we were pretty careful not to attack her personally. Uh, and we put at the beginning that we are not attacking her personally. We are simply saying that, we that for me anyway, that her premises are flawed, and the way she's phrasing things is contradictory. And, yeah. Why I did make a comment about her boobs, which may have been... Did we? It may have been... I did. No, you didn't. You're you're a good dog. No, no, no. I, I know that. But I mean, I don't even remember when you talked about that. And by, by the way, I mean, I don't think Leona Kay has a problem with her boobs at all. Um, <laughs> if, if I gave the impression that it was a personal attack, that's probably a style thing. Uh, I don't know her well enough to do a personal attack. There are people that I'm familiar with enough that I would feel confident doing a personal attack, but she isn't one of them. I just don't pull my punch as much either. No, I, yeah, I mean, like I said, I wasn't interested in, I generally try not to make personal attacks against people that I argue against. Uh, sometimes I do it for fun because, you know, I'm frustrated, I want to blow off some steam, but I don't really wish any ill will on anyone. And just so you know, Liana, if you can get through the rest of the video and, um, and want to watch more of it, I will still say that if you ever want to come on the show and talk to us... We will be very nice, and uh, we will want to entertain your ideas. But I'm not going to hold my breath, because I don't think you like us very much. So, um, But that's okay. We're still going to exercise our freedoms to uh, examine things that other people have written to find out how much mm -hmm. water or weight they can carry. <laughs> water yep. weight? They're water. water weight? No, no, that's a fat joke, Brian. Oh, no, I no, no, bad. Bad. Let's get the newspaper. <laughs> No, the newspaper. No. 
Well, I know that I, I have nothing to say. I mean, I on some level, I'm sorry if she's upset, but I'm not sorry for anything I fucking said. So it's the balance, right? Yeah. I mean, that, well, that's just it. So, uh, yeah, please, guys, I'm going to stop it here. Bunny, maybe we can, like, pick this up uh, next week or, or something and do the recap portion where we look at her. Try, we try not to misrepresent her arguments, but all we have to go on is what's in this video. Now, I know that she did an entire series of videos, and she probably has some arguments that were made in those videos before that may either answer the questions that we've raised or um, they they make a different statement that we're not aware of. If that's the case, then I will revisit the position on any arguments that I've made in this video. Mm -hmm. So I'm totally open to that. If any of you guys have an additional information, I just haven't been at the time to go through her entire series of videos. I've only watched this one and I think one other one. So um, that, that's and basically I, and my reason. And I will say that uh, next Wednesday, I may be in a lab. Okay. So I'm putting that out, I'm putting that out here now. So if I can't make it next week, nobody's like Benny's not showing up because she's afraid of the end of game. <laughs> no, I, I I may have a lab, so I may have to do it at another time, or you know, or not really, because everything I've said is fairly straightforward. Um, but I there don't know. Go. Anyway, well, we'll figure it out either way. So uh, thanks, guys. I'm going to get ready to close the stream out. I want to thank you, Bunny, for coming on with me. I oh, want to thank, thank you Allison for, for cracking the whip from the comment section. And yep. I want to thank you guys As for always. listening <laughs> uh, to this uh, Irma Gerdzerker. And please leave a comment. <laughs> Tell us uh, a couple of things. I mean, what was the question I asked before that I want everybody to say? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, games Tell you us, didn't finish. Yeah, a game, game that you never finished. finished. Uh, what are your thoughts on Trash Talk? Do you think that we need to control... Yeah the environment or do you think that people just need to control themselves and uh thoughts on liana k's video and be honest and try to be constructive because i don't think i think that she is honestly well-meaning but she's just working from what i believe to be a flawed premise and again i, I think you are more charitable yeah. <laughs> i do not ascribe either well-meaning well or ill-meaning i don't know enough yet uh that's so true i am i am completely i i do not ascribe good or bad it just is so all right. And, th and thank you, chat. Yep. Thank you, guys. And we'll see you next time.